Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Lewis Centennial Show. Uh, my name is Lewis. <laughs> uh, little uh, little change of plans here. I um, mean, it's my fault. Uh, uh, that I'm assuming I, I thought that the the, the program was going to start at uh, seven uh, seven was well, seven p.m. Uh, but I didn't realize that uh, Mr. Fabian Wagner was in the, uh, in UK, uh, so uh, it's seven uh, thirty his time, which would have made it uh, two thirty my time. But I was home getting ready for the show. I'm adaptable, and I'm here. Here to bring you a great, great, great show. Uh, Ali Brooks will, is going to be joining us as well. I, I, I told her what happened, and she's like laughing. And uh, so she's going to be uh, um, joining us in, in a few seconds. So uh, uh, I, I want to thank everyone uh, who's going to be uh, joining the program uh, soon. Uh, sending your questions, any question that you have for us, um, our acts um, obviously has to be respectful. Um, I, obviously, you know, I'm not going to ask for any spoilers because number one, um, I don't want to know number two, he's probably under, uh, NDA. So, um, that being said, I already sent him an invite. So he's going to be joining us, um, as soon as he can. Uh, but, um, it's, uh, sunny here in Florida. Uh, it's about 77 degrees in December. Amazing. 77 degrees in December. Uh, it's, uh, I'm literally in shorts and a t-shirt. That's how comfortable I am here in Tampa, Florida. So, uh, but, uh, in any event, um, I, I'm going to bring in, uh, our special guest, uh, Mr. Uh, Fabian Wagner, who joined us from the UK. Hey, what's up, Mr. Wagner? How you doing? Hey, how's it going? Very good. How are you? Uh, the hectic morning, I went to get my uh, car, uh, my treatment for my back, uh, four car accidents, and okay. uh, yeah, so I, I get my treatments on, on my back. They do some amazing stuff, the chiropractor and, and all that stuff, so, um, but I've been looking forward towards this. I couldn't sleep last night. I, I was telling my, my wife, you know, uh, who, who you were, and she's like, she's never seen the kid in me. She's like, she's never seen me this excited, and I, and I told her, I said, you know, it's one thing about the DC universe, I love the DC universe. And just to have you on, and Ali Brooks also, she's going to be joining us as well. Uh, just to have you on to ask you a few questions, um, not just about Justice League, but um, I, my show is more predicated to my guests. We get to know who you are. Um, so that being said, um, my, for, my first question to you is, um, to, please tell the audience, where are you from, and um, how did you get into this business? Sure. Hey, everyone. Um, well, my name is Fabian. I'm, uh, I'm German originally. I was born in Munich. And, uh, yeah, I got into the film industry very early on. It was something I wanted to do um, always since I was a kid, like maybe 13, 14 years old. So mm -hmm. I started shooting then. I started taking pictures. Um, you know, just filming lots of different stuff. And then I started working on short films for the film school, meeting some people. I was working in lots of different departments early on, you know, doing all sorts of different things. Eventually went to film school in Denmark, did a diploma there, was focusing mainly on cinematography, went back to Germany, started working as a, a trainee in the camera department, then a loader, did a couple of films as a loader music videos and after a year I decided I don't really want to be in the in Germany I don't really want to work on German shows mainly I wanted to work mainly on international productions mm -hmm. and so I decided to move to the UK and uh, uh, that was it now you, you said you started to get into it at the age of 13 14 was there any particular movie that you saw that made you you know think to yourself hey if i was shooting this i would have shot at this angle i would have shot it this way what 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 kind of movies that really uh that you got into that made you th uh, think about your career i wasn't thinking about movies like that at that time you know i just loved watching movies i loved i just loved movies i was watching movies all the time um I was just fascinated by filmmaking and and by by by, by movies and, and and the sort of emotions they create and the you know the places they can take you to and 
so so initially it wasn't any there wasn't anything like you know in the beginning i didn't even know that there was something like a cinematographer but right. but then very quickly uh, i started doing photography and i started taking stills my dad was taking a lot of he loved taking polaroids so i obviously saw him taking polaroids realized that you know sort of started learning about photography and framing and and then realized well there is something like a cinematographer and that, and that then became sort of my thing i guess and i was like very quickly saying that's something i'd love to do you know was there anyone in particular that uh while you was uh studying this or or or, or crafting your craft was there anyone in particular that you have that you saw that do you mean um, like their work I mean, too too many people to mention you know there's so many amazing filmmakers out there um I mean, Tarkovsky was always Ivan's childhood is one of my favorite movies, um, mm. probably my favorite movie, and so Tarkovsky has always been very high up on my list. I'm German, so Werner Herzog um, mm. is an amazing filmmaker who I love. I love his movies. Um, Fitzcarraldo um, is is one of my favorite movies, uh, but you know, there's so many, there's so many amazing movies, so many amazing filmmakers. So it's hard to really pick pick out names. Um, because there's just so many. Um, and joining us right now uh, is also a, a friend of mine, um, Ali Brooks. And Fabian, one thing about Ali Brooks, when I was on a show on Tuesday, the thing the guys was talking about, and I'm not, you're probably going to see us soon, and she knows where I'm going with this. There's actually a video of Miss Brooks She's actually squatting 200 pounds on her back. Wow. And yeah, and and us guys, I mean, we're not talking about the, we're talking about, we're amazed that she was doing that. So Ali, please tell us how to tell me what made you do that, Jesus. I can't believe that's the first thing you brought up. <laughs> um, well, over the past almost two years now, I've gotten into weightlifting. Um, by the way, it's awesome to meet you, Fabian. I was not prepared until like four hours later to do this. Yeah, yeah, I um, I'm kind of jittering sorry, right guys. now. This is, my, this is my fault, I think. I just... I no, swear, no. It's okay. We're all on different time zones. So, um, no, don't... No, it's... Yeah, it's okay. It's totally okay. Um, so, I'm a little jittery right now because I was like scrambling... Um, to get everything. You were lifting weights. You were lifting weights up to a minute ago. <laughs> I was cleaning. I was cleaning actually, which is like a workout in itself. But um, it's awesome to meet you. It's so cool. Um, Thank you. Um, so we're talk squatting. Yes. Okay. I got into it, and then just over time, I have preferred it over just. I mean, I do normal workouts too, but I've didn't realize that I was going to like weightlifting, and so. I've enjoyed just trying to get stronger. And so recently, like my Instagram page, <clears throat> I don't really do much of my channel on there, but it's more of a personal page where I had decided to start recording workouts and recording, you know, to kind of track my progress and stuff like that. And recently I started sharing some of them on Twitter and apparently it's become a point of discussion now, which I didn't know until Luis and I were talking the other night to prepare for this. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of funny that that was brought up, but yeah, it's just, um, I enjoy recording it and sharing it. And uh, apparently other people are talking about it, which I didn't know, but it's kind of, it's kind of funny. I can't even do a hundred. <laughs> Let alone two hundred, because <laughs> because because of, of my back. But um, I so I already asked uh, Fabian a couple of questions, so, okay, so I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna have you ask um, Fabian your your question as well. Okay, well, forgive me if I repeat anything that was mentioned because I don't know what you discussed yet. But just so we can kind of all get an understanding um, for viewers as well, what. Since you're a cinematographer, director of photography, what exactly is your main role when it comes to filmmaking? What is your main objective when you are involved in a film? Well, I mean, the main objective will always be just to have some fun, you know? That would be the main objective. 
uh, obviously, this is such an awesome job. I'm so lucky to be doing this job. So it is a, it's a job where you can actually, even though it can be very stressful at times, it can be very, you know, long hours, it can be very tough work. It, it's something that you can always enjoy, which is just amazing, you know. Uh, but the main objectives would obviously be, you know, joking aside, um, you know, you as a cinematographer, you're there to visualize the director's visions, whatever he or she has in their heads, uh, you're there to help making that into moving images. So, um, you know, it's very creative, it's very collaborative, it's very, you know, um, it's just great fun, you know, you get to see very a lot of different places, get to meet a lot of different people, work with actors, which is something I love. I love actors. I love working with actors. So, and, uh, you know, you get to tell some awesome stories sometimes, so. Awesome, that's cool. Um, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, Louis, can, Louis, can you give me a little bit of a summary of like what you've discussed already? Well, um, he, he, he t uh, told us uh, what, you know, why he was raised and um, what made him get uh, get into this business. Um, and uh, I, I only asked him two questions. So um, you, you just came on like a couple of minutes when we were really talking. So you have an impeccable timing. <laughs> oh, OK. OK. Oh, am I unmuted now? No, no. no okay. OK, OK. Um, okay, awesome. I wasn't sure how long you had been talking yet. So, all right. So I would like to know, how did you first feel when you were, when you first found out that this Snyder Cut was actually going to be released for everyone to see? What was like the first thing that came to your mind? Because we know oh, that was... you've shared a lot. You've been a big supporter of the Snyder Cut movement. You've shared a lot on social media. And I think fans definitely appreciate that it wasn't just us fans supporting it and calling for it, but people like you and Clayinos and Jay Oliva who were also big supporters of it. So I could imagine that it would be even more um, emotional for people who worked on it to find out. Yeah, I mean, look, it's such a it's such a multi layered thing. I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, first of all, it's something that's never happened in the history of film before, right? Right. It's never happened that you had a, any film, I guess. Um, that that then was completely redone. I mean, obviously, we we know that there's director's cuts and stuff, um, but but not to a scale like that's been happening with the Snyder Cut. So, you know, the movie that we all saw wasn't the movie that I expected to see when we initially shot the film and I worked with Zach. So obviously, that was a disappointing thing. Um, I'm not here. I'm not going to make anyone bad because it's just what happened. That's just the way it is, you know. And there's many different factors that play into that. Um, but it wasn't the movie I expected. That, that was for me. That was the reason why I was sad that I didn't get to see the movie that I was working on for so long. And 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 I had such an amazing time doing it as well. Uh, like I think everybody knows. I've always been saying that. So so you know the the, the fact that we are going to see. There's the Snyder cut, and then we're going to get to see Zach's vision. is incredible. You know, yeah, it's definitely. it's um it's absolutely amazing, and I, I I can't believe it. And the most amazing thing is it's something that has purely been born out of the dedication of the fans, and um, you know that is something that's also been unique, and that's also been no one's ever heard of that before that the fans can create such a huge movement to to, to generate um, the Snyder Cut. So that's, uh, you know, that's incredible. I think that's the reason why me, why a lot of other people and me support, you know, not, not only do we support the Snyder Cut because Zach is, you know, an awesome person and an amazing director and, and, and just one of the best guys you could ever imagine, but also because, you know, it's the film that we all worked on and you know so that's so that's the one side obviously which is just like you know feeling kind of really joyful because we can see the film that we we did shoot and we were working on for so long obviously on the other hand it's slightly it's it's more of a bitter feeling because we all know why it all happened and why zach had to leave the movie because obviously unfortunately his daughter passed away and that was a really tragic incident and, and a horrible thing to happen to anyone. And so 
it's always something that's you know in the back of your in the back of your head and there's also been of course you know some really positive things have come out of it and you know for suicide prevention and making people more aware of you know how you know how how people feel and we don't even know how people close to us feel and we don't know about it. So it's, 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 it's a thing that's also very close to my heart. It's happened to a couple of friends of mine and it was very horrible to, to, to see it happen to Zach. So, you know, it's this whole thing has got all emotions, I think in it, which makes it even, even more amazing that it's all happening and coming out. So. Um, Fabian, when did you actually uh, find find out that uh, there was a such thing as a Snyder Cut movement? When uh, when did, did you find out from somebody? Did you when I mean when when did you know that the fans uh, were fighting uh, for that cut? Well, I think it was pretty early on. You know, you could see what the fans were feeling about the theatrical version came out in 2017 um and so if people didn't let it go for a long long time and so you would always you you would always be reminded of that oh you know they're still they're still not happy about the theatrical cut you know they're still talking about let's get us another cut and then suddenly obviously this whole movement came along you know i, I can't quite remember when that was it's i mean it was probably was it early 2019 or something i can't remember when it actually became like a real movement thing but uh, i mean i obviously um saw it pretty early on and um supported it straight away right so when when you actually because i i know there's some quotes out there um i believe you said when you saw the the, the justice league like your heart dropped you was heartbroken because a, a lot of your hard work that that you put it into it you didn't see on there um I, i'm not i'm not as smart as you know as i don't have a yale degree or to have a sanford degree but me personally i know that if I work hard, smart as. <laughs> yeah well you know sometimes uh, people could have all those degree but what they don't have is common sense and yes. unfortunately you know that's that's what's missing but uh, i know as a human being if if i would have worked hard on something and really dedicated my life into it and had to have someone else uh just redid the work not because of my work was bad but because of the other stuff the other you know and i'm not going to get into it but all the the politics to me that makes it more harder to me it's easier for someone to say hey fabian you know we uh we're going to go different directions because you know uh we need this we need that so you so you could go and improve on what you know any uh, criticism well construction criticism that you get but to have it done the way that they did it i, I mean if it would have been me i, I would have been hurt and upset I mean, is, is that is that is that how you felt, or or in the business you have to move on? Well, you know, in the end, I mean, look, I I think I said that I couldn't see much because I was crying all the way through. You know, that's a bit of a you know very um, that's a little bit over the top. But obviously, I was upset. You know, it's I I you know I I I loved working with Zach. Zach is an incredible director. He's super talented. He's super visual. We had a great time and I knew all the stuff that we shot and I knew how we were making the stuff look. I knew how I was shooting it. I knew, you know, if you look at the first three trailers that came out for Justice League in 2016, they were the trailers that Zach edited, that Zach recolor graded. And you can really see the style and the look of that movie that I was going for, that we were going for back then. And it was totally different, those three trailers. Look totally different to the film that we that we eventually saw. So that's obviously very sad, and you know you you kind of never get over that in a way. But then you know on the other hand, it's a movie, and you're there, you're employed by the studio to make a movie, and in the end, they can do with that movie whatever they want to do. So it's not you know it's not there's nothing much I can do, and you know I've got to do other things, you know. So obviously it would upset you and you would be annoyed about it, but you know, you'd have to kind of move on and, and, and do other stuff. You know, I had, even back then, you know, I had a difficult couple of years because my mom passed away during the time. So when something like that happens, you don't think about that movie anymore. You think about your family, you know, 
in Zach's case, it was even worse because his daughter passed away, so he didn't think about anything else but his family. Of course, it upset him that his movie wasn't the movie that he wanted to make, but other things became way more important. Go ahead, Ali. Yeah, I agree. I think that um, one part of why the release of Snyder Cut movement just kept gaining momentum was because it became bigger than just the movie, like you had mentioned earlier, how, you know, the AFSP and all of that. And a lot of us share the links and, you know, the products that are that people are able to buy to donate to that. And I think Zach has shown a lot of appreciation for oh, the God, huge, yeah. yeah, he's yeah, you can tell that he's very um in feels very appreciative to the fans, which is why I think part of one of the reasons why he's been hopping on, you know, YouTubers streams and stuff like that, and not just these big media outlets, but he's giving attention to the fans because I think more than just um, having this huge movement for his movie to come out, I know he appreciates that, but I think it's special to him that it has raised awareness for this bigger thing you know, and that it's would be personal yeah. for him. And I think it's just really cool to see how this movement has changed over the past couple of years. And like, we which, is my, which is why this is makes this, it makes the, the DC fans even more special. This, this whole thing, you know, is pretty incredible. Um, I, I, I'm not a little something personal about myself. The, the, the reason I, I, got involved and i'm just one of many the millions millions of people out you know out there who fought, who fought for the cut but to me fabian it was more personal to me because at the age of it was 93 so i would have been 19 i tried to commit suicide uh i felt depressed uh i felt my parents had just uh, broken up um and you know i wasn't doing well in school um i was being bullied you know um, in high school so there was a lot of things that i was going through uh, emotionally and uh depression to me is the silent killer uh you know feeling alone and that's how i felt so when i heard about what happened with zach's daughter uh it broke my heart uh you know because i had i have two girls and I, I can, I cannot fathom the pain that both uh, Deborah and Zach was going through, but what really got me angry and I don't expect you, you know, to, to answer. I'm just telling you from, from my point of view is um, I don't know Zach, but I do know what's written about him. And I know Zach is not a quitter. I know when he starts something, he finished it. So I already knew something was up when they put out a press saying that uh, that Zach stepped away. I, in, in my mind, I'm saying to myself, he's not a quitter, you know, and, 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 and you know, I did, my, I did my digging, but that's what got me into the movie because of how they treated that man. He gave seven years of his life and to use his daughter as a, an excuse you know, for the public, that really hurt me. So that's why I joined the movement. And, and to me, it was something more personal to say, hey, again, I think, you know, I'm a common sense person. It's okay if the studio wants to move on. It's fine. I mean, everybody moves on, but at least allow the man to finish what he started. So, and so it, it not only it impacted him, but it impacted the cast, the crews, yourself, for them taking a, a, a different directions and then misleading the public. And so to me, that's why it made me stronger to support, not only support Zach, but to support the suicide prevention because I lived it. I lived it. I know what Autumn was going through. And there are a lot of, and, and there are a lot of people out there who has these kind of thoughts that they don't speak up. So mm -hmm. I'm happy that, uh, that this movie, this movement gave the suicide prevention a face. Because now people are not afraid to speak up. Now people are not afraid to go seek help. You know, you don't have to be embarrassed to say, hey, I feel down today. I need some help. You know, and to empower those kind of people. You're okay. I'm here with you. Um, and, you know, so that's why I joined the movement. Um, uh, it, obviously, because I do, I, you know, I, I'm a DC fan, but it really, really impacted me. So, I, for, so that's why I wanted to tell you as a fan 
the reason why I got involved because it it really hit home to me. It really it really hit home to me. It broke my heart um, to see that man what he went through and what it, what it impressed me about Zach is that he never ever said one negative thing. That he he's a better man than me because if it would have been me, <laughs> I'm telling you because I I I, I would have spoke up and I and I know I know he he knew what was going on. I mean, Deborah was still attacked, you know, attached uh, to the project. So I, 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 he must have known what was going on. So, so anyway, so when you seeing uh, the, the people, especially the the, the suicide uh, pre uh, prevention, doesn't it make you feel like, wow, I'm part of something special, not just a, a, a movie, but a, a movie like helping others? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's, you know, it's always good to help others. It's always, it's like my wife always says, it's nice to be nice. And it doesn't cost you anything, um, so I, I think that's I think that's one of the most important things. But to be honest, I've never thought about it that way. You know, to me, it was just always clear that you know, um, to obviously be supportive to Zach and to be supportive to anyone who anyone who needs it. And you know, having seen uh, you know the love that people have for Zach Snyder, and having seen the love that people his fans have for his films to, you know, if I can uh, talk about it for an hour, you know, a few times, you know, that's nothing. That's, you know, of course you would do that without even thinking about it. So I've never really thought about it. You know, I'm just glad that it's all happened this way and that, and that all these movements have taken off like they have. Go ahead, Ali. Yeah. I think that's one thing that's been really consistent with all of the, um, artists like yourself who have been involved with making the movie um the just like Zach, they, i mean you guys haven't i mean i guess on a professional level you probably wouldn't anyway but you know not saying anything negative towards the studio or you know joss whedon or anyone that was you know kind of had taken over the project at the time it's just been support for the fact that you guys made a certain movie us fans believed we were getting a certain movie and then it didn't happen. And so I think that's another reason why <clears throat> all of us have like pushed so hard to see it was because all of the stuff that we were shown in the trailers, like you were talking about earlier. Um, I never understood when people were saying there's no way it could exist, but all you have to do is watch the trailers. That's how I thought about it was, you know, and then all this, I mean, beautiful imagery that we've seen, from people like yourself and, you know, it just, it doesn't, I mean, we are, no, if we're not going to, we know that we didn't get that when we watched it in theaters, you know, immediately when we left, we were like, that's not what we saw. And where was this? And where was that? And, you know, <clears throat> the fact that you guys have all been so supportive and everyone that has worked with Zach that has done interviews like this or has made statements about it. And even the cast, you know, it just seems like there's a family on set when you guys are shooting the movies with Zach and just the environment that is created when you like, I don't understand, like that shows in the movie itself also, you know, like that comes through mm. and it just, I think it, it probably, I mean, I think this is the most like a fandom has ever actually known about all the people behind the scenes <laughs> that have, you know, yeah, like, I, I don't yeah. think, I don't think in the past, unless you were maybe like going to film school or something like that, but just as a general fandom, I don't know how many of us have been as familiar with all these different components of, you know, the film besides the director. And I think that it's cool that like, you know, we've been able to have more appreciation for the cinematographers and you know, all these other people, the, the, um, the stunt teams and, you know, it's just expanded so much and yeah it's a very good point awesome. besides you know of course we know Zack Snyder but like it's gone beyond that now and mm -hmm. you know having people like you that were like wow this is so awesome that we you know we get to appreciate your side of it and what you bring to the table you know and that it's you know the director yes you guys are bringing his vision to life but you have your own role in that and see all of you guys being so supportive of it um, it makes sense because it's your work too. And, you know, like, I don't think it was over the top that you were crying while watching the movie because that would be 
devastating to see your work, you know, not coming through. I would totally, I mean, I would probably, I think some of us probably have cried about it too. I think you will cry. It's not Ali. even our work. <laughs> Ali, I think, I think you will cry. I mean, you're, you're crying for a trailer. So if you cry for a trailer. I, I, I did think. cry. <laughs> I did cry when the Snyder Cut um, teaser came out because it's just been an emotional, like I said, if it's been emotional for the fans this whole time that have been involved, it's just a surreal thing because like you said, it hasn't happened before, not to this extent, maybe a director's cut, but not a completely different version. And now we're getting even more than what we thought we would get if it ever happened. So I don't think it's over the top that you cried because no, I, I you and it's your own, it's your work. It's not just what you want to see as a fan. Absolutely. I don't think that's over the top. <laughs> But are there any anticipated, do you have any like most anticipated moments to see that were not in the theatrical version? No, Without, I'm just, like, you, know, I'm just you know, Zach, Zach is a very unique filmmaker. He's a very visionary filmmaker, as we all know. I mean, I've always been his, a fan of his work for since 300, really. And so, you know, to know just, just the fact you know, I don't know how Zach's going to cut this. I haven't seen much of it yet. You know, I've seen a few bits and we've spoken a few times, but I haven't seen it yet. But I know that he's going to cut it in his way. He's going to do the Zack Snyder things that we all love. You know, and and just to, just to know that is making me excited. So there isn't really anything in particular that I can't wait to see. It's, you know, really just seeing it. Just to, just to be seeing the way that he's always wanted to make this. Uh, Tony has a question for Fabian. Uh, what movie do you feel uh, did your best work on, or should I say you were the happiest with? So that's a question from Tony. Hi, Tony. That's a good question. Hopefully my next one. <laughs> Is that how you think about it? Like, you know, okay, this one's cool, but I hope to always do better on the next one. Well, you know, you always. I'm, I'm very self-critical, and I like to, you know, it's it's a big learning process. I've still got a lot to learn. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm very grateful for the things I've been a part of. You know, I've been very grateful to be a part of such big um, shows like Game of Thrones or Justice League or uh, Sherlock and things. You know, um, I think the things that I'm most proud of are probably. You know, things from very early on in my career, like things where we had no money, you know, where our budget was a hundred dollars and we managed to, we built everything, we built the set together. It was just a few friends and we built the set and we made everything ourselves. We had no money and it looked like it was $10,000 or more. That's, that's the things you're kind of most proud of because they are the most creative and they're the most fun and uh, just to give you a background, what I was doing when the Snyder Cut actually was announced, um, I was at again uh, driving. I was driving uh, towards uh, my my therapy, and I was hearing the commentary for for the Man of Steel. And when he officially announced it, I screamed so loud in in my in my SUV that people literally were driving by, and they were looking at me like I was crazy. And my scream was more of a relief because we spent literally the end of 2017, 2018 fighting for this cut. And to be told that it's never going to happen, to be told that no uh, no uh, phone campaign, no letter campaign, no tweeting is, is going to change uh, uh, change that. To be told, you know, to 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 there was a hit piece on a Wall Street Journal, uh, a Wall Street Journal. I'm pretty sure you know about that that it does not exist and yet we kept on fighting we kept on fighting we kept on fighting and it actually made the movement even bigger so uh i felt the relief not just not for me but for zach for you for everyone who works so hard in that so now the public we get to see your work I, I was relieved and it really it really shows me and, and I had a couple of YouTubers on my show. It shows me what the human mind could do when we put our minds together and focus on one goal. If the human race just could put our minds together, 
forget about all those things and focus on the good, we could get a lot accomplished. I mean, what what do you think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's true. You know, like I said, this is something that's never happened before. So yes, I totally agree. You know, um, but there's also there's a lot of things I have to sort of play play in with that. And you know, this happened at the right time. Um, yes. You know, this might have not happened with every filmmaker. You know. Zach was the right person to to also do that with. You know, there's a lot. I think there's a lot of things that sort of play together in this. But yes, you're right. You know, when everybody pulls together and 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 does the same thing, then things can happen. So that's a great thing. Uh, here's a question that I I want to ask you: Who is out of the Justice League um, uh, cast? Who is the biggest prankster? <laughs> oh. Uh well they all they all they all pretty they all pretty funny and they all they all like to, to play a prank but it probably would have to be between I mean Jason is always up for a bit of fun and um Ezra obviously yeah um you know those two are probably on the top but they all they all up for a bit of fun go ahead uh, uh Ali um I have a question about your personal style as a cinematographer. So in Man of Steel and BVS, I mean, all of all of these movies, well, Zach in general, he has this beautiful, like you just know a Zach shot when you see it, you know a Zach movie when you see it. He has this um, like signature, like he, he has beautiful shots in his movies and color and, you know, it's very significant. But how does your personal style differ from like the cinematography we saw in Man of Steel and BVS, even though those movies also had beautiful imagery? How would you say you brought something different from those movies when working on Justice League? Which I guess we won't, we'll know more in detail when we see it, because we haven't seen it yet. But just from what we have been able to see a little bit in previous trailers or like now in the teaser, how would you say you maybe have your, what was different? Great question, Ali. Yeah, that's a very good question. I mean, look, you know. Uh, I mean, by the way, all, I'm sorry. That was from a Twitter question. So, yeah, uh, it was my personal question, totally but it was a good question. Totally they wanted me to ask you. So, um, I mean, first of all, you know, one of the amazing things about this job is, is is that every job is different, and and even if you do two films of the same genre, you still might approach them in a completely different way. So they're still totally different. So. So that's, you know, so so your work is never the same. So that's one of the, the things I love the most about it. Um, the reason why those films, you know, I mean, Man of Steel was different to, to BBS, and and this would be different to BBS and Man of Steel, but hopefully, what I mean, what what we try to do, and what I certainly try to do, was that it can, it can live in the same universe. It can live in the same family. But it's a different beast, you know. And so Zach was very clear about that he wanted this to be um, slightly more colorful than BBS, for example. You know, there are certain things that he wanted this to be different with. You know, this was this was something new, and so you know, he wanted to make it different for whatever creative reason, but also for his own reasons, because, you know, you don't want to repeat yourself. You don't want to always do the same thing. So, you know, you come up with new reasons why this should need to be different, why this should be different. And and that's, you know, and that's one of the very challenging things and one of the great things. So hopefully we managed to make it part of the family of those movies, but it has its own look and it has its own style. And, you know, I think the, the, the wish and the, uh, of any cinematographer would be to, to create that and then be able to put your own sort of little stamp onto it. Um, and I, to be honest, I don't actually know what my what my stamp is. I I think I hopefully I have one. I've been told by people that when they see some stuff, they sometimes think, oh, this must be, this could be Fabian maybe, which is very very nice. I always find it very very nice, uh, and I'm very grateful for that. And hopefully that's true. Um, but you know, it's it's more of a. It's not something that I consciously do. It's something that's very unco- subconsciously. It's something that you strive for. You know, I love 
for example, uh, there's only things that I love visually. I love silhouettes. I love reflections. I love, you know, I love certain elements. And then so you, whatever you do, you kind of subconsciously, I guess, put them into the things you shoot. And that then if that all works together, that kind of becomes your style, hopefully so. You have a follow up, Ali? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good point because I think with anyone who's, you know, considers themselves a creative person, I think that kind of just happens. Like if you try to think too hard about, you know, of course you might have a idea in your head of how you want it to look, but then if you try to overthink it, I think it's more the subconscious that probably comes through and then it kind of just, like you said, starts becoming your... Well, it's definitely, it's definitely it's, there's a subconscious element and there's a conscious element. Obviously, right. you know, if you're doing a period piece, if you're doing a period drama, something that's set in the 70s, let's say, which is a very distinctive period, you know, there's very conscious things that you do from a color perspective, for example, to push that movie into the 70s so that when you see it, immediately people will go, this is the 70s, right? And you can you do that with costumes, with color, with composition, whatever. So that and that's, those are very, very conscious things that you do, but then there's a lot of a lot of stuff is happening on an unconscious level that you don't really think about it, you know, on the forefront of your head. It's, it, you know, it just it's it's things like I said, it's things that you like visually that you then try and put into those images, which and all, once they're all together, hopefully that will work. So. Yeah, and I think it makes sense also what you were saying about Man of Steel BVS, Justice League. Like we all, we're going to be able to know, we're going to tell that when we watch Zack Snyder's Justice League that it exists within the same family of Man of Steel and BVS, but it's still going to have its own little elements that are that are different. So I think that's a good way to explain that. Uh, uh, Fabian, when when you were shooting uh, Justice League, did you speak with Larry Fong uh, to get to know um, Zack Snyder? What you know, what was he looking for? Um, you know, what he likes, what he doesn't like. Did, did, did you get to talk to him? Well, I mean, I, I knew Larry before Justice League. Um, you know, and I've always been a big fan of Larry, so I never spoke to Larry about. Zach, because I don't, I normally, I generally never talk to other people about people because you're always going to get a certain impression of someone, which is never going to be your own impression because every person is different, right? So, mm -hmm. so what's the point? Um, uh, so, but I knew Larry, and obviously, you know, I was, you know, I know that they're great friends, and Larry's been shooting most of, of Zach's stuff, so I was very fortunate to be able to to do this film with Zach because normally obviously Larry would have done it. So and and we spoke. I spoke to Larry on numerous occasions before uh, and after, but um you know but never about those kind of things. Did you did you look at um uh his work like in BVS and say oh that's a good shot maybe I could do it this way I mean uh is that is that something that you guys do when when you guys are studying a movie or you know, or a director? Is, is, do you guys do that? Uh, uh, probably people, you know, people are different. Some people do that. I certainly don't do it that way. I mean, obviously, I watch BBS and I, uh, I've seen all of Larry's films and I love all of Larry's films. I think Larry's one of the best cinematographers out there. Um, uh, so, but I, I didn't look at it and think like, oh, I need to do that and copy that for Justice League. Mm, okay. But were there anything that were there things from Man of Steel and BVS that you were kind of inspired by to make it feel like it was in the same family, like you said, but not copy, well, I mean, yeah, but like things that are you know that should be like you said. It's, the, o it's as, the overall. It's the overall picture. It's the overall mm -hmm. overall way they look. I mean, you know, you can take you can frame you can split those movies into frame grabs of each yeah. shot, and it's a beautiful. Every image is beautiful, right? So, you know, so there's a lot of images that inspired and kind of inspire you. Just like even, again, on a subconscious level, it's nothing conscious, but, you know, I mean, I remember there's a Superman shot in, in Man of Steel, which I loved. And so when I was shooting Superman on Justice League, 
I'm sure that in my head, somewhere in the back of my head, that scene from Man of Steel played, and I was like, oh, you know, cool, I could do something like that. You know, that would be really cool because there could be a similarity there. But I wouldn't sit there and go like, have a printout of Man of uh, Man of Steel and be like, oh, I need to copy that to this shot. That makes sense. No, no, a lot of this. I think a lot of this plays. At least for me, I'm sure it's the same for a lot of people. At least for me, it it. A lot of this stuff is much more on an emotional level rather than like a technological level or a, or a, uh, you know, it's 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 much more emotional. So it's much more internal, uh, you know. I I actually um, uh, find out about you. Uh, there was I think you were in New. I'm, correct me if I'm wrong. I think you were in New York and you were you did an interview. I think it was about the Snyder Cut. Uh, Lenditis, I think he was, um, uh, he was there. Uh, but, uh, I know Larry Funk thinks highly of you. Um, and, uh, I did, I did, I did ask Larry, uh, you know, cause there was a whole big debate on Twitter a couple of months ago. Uh, it, he prefers, there's a lot of people that prefers pineapple on their pizza. So I wanted to know <laughs> you. Do you prefer pineapples on your pizza or pepperoni? I mean, that was a whole big debate that actually Zack Snyder started. There are there are people who are pro pineapple on pizza. There are people who are not a big fan of pineapple pizza. So we want to know where does Mr. Fabian Wagner stand in the pineapple on the pizza? Are you pro or are you against pineapple on pizza? I would not put pineapple on pizza at home if I was making myself a pizza, let's put it that way. But if you give me a pizza at three o'clock in the morning after a night out and I'm really hungry and it's got pineapples on it, I'm not going to complain. Okay, but but it's, it's not something that, that I mean, because to me, uh, if I want real pizza, I don't put pineapple pizza. Now, if I'm ordering Domino's, like 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 my, like my wife, she likes to thin crust. My you know my two daughters and and my wife they like to thin crust uh, Domino's pineapple and pepperoni. But if I'm going to like a um, a a pizzeria shop, or a, I want true cheesy pizza is what I want. So now we know Mr. Fabio Wagner. He will only eat pineapple on the pizza if it's probably the last thing on earth. Other than that, <laughs> other than that morning. yeah, yeah. So, hey, uh, Tony, nice to see you on uh, Nerdy Many Ways. Uh, thank you. The big shout out. Um, I have, baby, I actually have a friend uh, who does a little bit what you do. Um, and I, I started asking him a question because I told him I was going to have you on my show, and he takes pictures. And he told me the key are the angles and the lenses. I have no idea what that means. He told me that you will know what lenses mean. So ex explain to the audience how important are the lenses for someone in your profession? Well, that is a tricky question because there's so many different lenses and they all do something different. They all have different technical aspects, they all look slightly differently. Some are cooler, some are warmer, some have horizontal flares, some have no flares, some have some are soft on the corner, some are soft in the middle, some are straight, some are bended. I mean, this is like the whole, you know, there's, a, there's a lot of different lenses out there. Um, so, it, lenses are a whole, it's, it's one of the things of this job that before you start something, you kind of have an idea in your head of, of, of what the movie or the TV show should look like. It gives you a certain, uh, gives you a certain style of lenses that could be possible, and then really it's down to testing. So you would take all of those lenses that you're thinking of that might be right, and you would have a couple of days and you would test them and you would shoot certain scenes with actors or without actors uh, and light them and try out what those lenses do and how they look like and see which which one is the right one. So lenses lenses are very important, yes. But in the end, a good movie, all you need for a good movie is you need a camera and you need a couple of really good actors and a good script. That's all you need. So in the end, it doesn't matter what lenses are on there because that's all it takes for a good film. He, he's practically every every Christmas he asks his wife uh, for a lenses that cost thirteen thousand dollars, 
And I had no idea that lenses cost that much. And um, <laughs> of, uh, I, another friend told them that the, taking a picture on the phone is the same thing I'd taken it on the camera. And he got, he looked at him like, don't you dare say that to me. <laughs> so, uh, I, I mean, I just, I, and he takes some beautiful pictures. I mean, he took a picture of, of Puerto Rico in the sky. He took a picture of, of animals. Right now he's in the Everglades in Miami uh, taking pictures. So uh, I, I, I hope I hope he does well. So, um, uh, Ali, go ahead. Uh, I don't want to, you know, uh, uh, I know it's your turn now. <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. I'm, I'm listening to the to the conversation. Um, so I'm, I would imagine, I guess, that each film you work on and, you know, different cast, different crews, different directors. Oh, you muted me. There we no, go. no, okay. no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm sure with, you know, each project, there's maybe something that kind of sticks with you from that experience or like maybe something, I'm sure every project you probably learn something different or it's always going to be a different experience, but is there something that like really stuck with you during your ex experience working with Zach and everyone else um, for Justice League, like something specific that kind of just stands out to you, like that you carry with you now? The, the, uh, the, did we lose you? Uh, uh, Fabian, did you did you get Ali's question? Yeah, I mean that. I mean that film was very special for me on 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 very on many many different levels. I mean, like you just said, you know, everything you do, no matter whether it's big or small, uh, short or long form. Hello. Yeah, I think there's there's a lag somewhere. I think Fabian's muted. No, he's not muted. I didn't mute him. No, but I'm saying next to his name, there's a little. Yeah, no, I think he did it. Yeah, no. Fabian, I think you, I think you put yourself on mute. There we go. There we go. Okay. I think his feed is lagging. Yes. Okay, so I'll just continue. I think your feed is lagging, Fabian. That's why it's a little bit behind. Okay. Um, well, anyway, we have about uh, about ten minutes with uh, with uh, Fabian. Um, I don't want to take too much uh, too much of his time. Um, Fabian, do you have without telling us? Uh, uh, obviously, you know, I know you're under NDA, but do you have an idea when we will get to see uh, Zack Snyder's movie? I think, I think we're lagging. Did I lose you, Fabian? I think. You can hear me, Ali. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I think I think we're we're we're, we're lagging. Um, no, I'm here, but I think it's just coming through very late. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Yes. Okay. I think he's gonna go and come back. Yeah. Uh, I think he's gonna shoot me an email. He's gonna come. He's gonna come right back in. But uh, any, anyway, uh, Ali, uh, lesson learned from my part. Um, I'm thinking 7:30 my time, and uh, uh, so I'm sorry um, that I put you on 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 the spot there. But um, that's okay. I was just like, oh no. <laughs> yes, yes, I yes. Mean, I thought I was able to like rush and get. You know, I'm glad I was here at home or something. You know, not like out running an errand or something but i was like oh my gosh this is a huge difference in time like you know someone might need to start 30 minutes or an hour early but it makes sense though why it was you know a big discrepancy between when we thought we were going to start yeah can, can you hear us now uh, fabian it's still late yeah 
I don't know. I'm not sure if it's my connection. Um, I think I uh, it could be my connection as well. Uh, can you, you can, are, there we go. It's just a little bit. It sounds a bit strange. Gotcha, gotcha. Go. Um, okay. go go ahead, Ali. I know. I know you were. Um, you, uh, you go ahead. Ask your question again. I'm sorry for repeating the question, but um, we weren't able to hear you the first time. No, can that's you okay. Still hear us? Yes, I think he can. He just he just took himself off, off camera. You can still hear us, right? I'm sorry, guys. I can't. I can't really. I can't really hear oh, you. Okay. Properly. Oh, that's it. I can hear you now. Okay. So um, I can we, hear you now. Okay, we weren't able to hear yeah, the can answer. You hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Ali. Um, so, did you have a specific experience or a specific moment or something that stuck with you after working on Justice League that carries with you now? Yeah, just the whole everything about Justice League was a special experience to me. You know, you, every every time you do a film, you learn something. But working with Zach. Um, I definitely, I don't think I've ever learned as much as I have working with Zach. Um, you know, he, he, like I said, he's a super visual director. He's very creative. He's also just a super nice human being. He's very collaborative. Um, and so, yes, I, I, I've taken away uh, a lot of positive experiences from working with him. Uh Fabian, uh, without telling us, uh, do you have, because uh, obviously we know you're under NDA, uh, do you have an idea uh, where when we're going to see Zach's film? Uh, Unfortunately, I have no idea. Okay. Sorry, guys. I try. <laughs> um, what, uh, do you have a next project after Justice League? Are you, is there something that you're working on that we don't know about? There's something I'm working on currently, which you don't know about because it's not official yet, but uh, it's an exciting one. And uh, When will we know? I'm not sure when, when they're going to. I don't know when they're going to announce it, but it um, can't be that long. Okay. All right. So uh, 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 is it with Zach or, or you, you can't say? I can't say. <laughs> okay, I try. <laughs> okay, um, and we, we have we have guys. We have about about uh, about ten minutes left with, with, with Fabian. So so we're gonna uh, wind this down with Fabian. Then I'm gonna stay on with Ali a little bit. Uh, Ali, uh, is there uh, and questions? Because uh, you are asking some great questions. I, I'm really impressed. Uh, you, you you actually you actually complete me. You make the show. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. This is like my first like real interview with someone. Like, really awesome yeah yeah I've just be yourself. i'm just wondering when um the snyder cut comes out or i guess in general anyways any projects that you work on when they're released are you watching them as a fan or are you watching them like you know what i mean from your professional like are you nitpicking your own stuff or are you watching it like just to enjoy it as a fan you know, I just, like I said early on, I just love movies, you know. I love, I watch anything, everything, all the time. I always love watching movies. So, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, I'm definitely not, not nitpicking. I wouldn't, you know, like I've always been a, I've always been a Game of Thrones fan before I did Game of Thrones and, and I watched it till the end, even though, you know, it's a little bit different once when you've shot it, you know what happens. So it's, it's a kind of a different viewing experience. But, you know, no, I still watch it, you know. Who who is your favorite DC character? I think that some some of the fans or somebody um um asked me that they want to know from you. Who is your favorite DC character if you have one? Well, my personal one is Batman purely because I've always loved Batman when I was a kid. You know, I was always he was always my favorite character as a kid. I loved the, I loved the Batman movies. You know, the early Tim Burton stuff. So, um, you know, I, I he he would be my top one. But you know, you know, he kind of. Enjoy all of them, really. Okay, go ahead, Ali. Oh, you put me on the spot. I wasn't ready for another question. Um, <laughs> is it different though? Well, is it kind of surreal to see them though, like in front of you in these beautiful costumes? Like, are you still kind of thinking them? Are you thinking of them as? Well, I know when you're shooting, you're gonna have to think of them as like the character. But is it kind of like going back and forth between when you're not shooting and you're just hanging out on set? Is it like a weird, like visually you're like, wow, that really looks like 
a Superman or a Batman out of the comics, but this they're in front of me now. Like, is it just a, I don't know. Is it? No, no. I mean, look, I mean, shooting, you know, shooting with, with them was great, you know, just to be on the set. I mean, my favorite day was the, you know, the, the rooftop scene when, when Gordon switches on the bat light, you know, that was like such an awesome oh, thing to shoot the bat yeah. light, you know, and Batman up on yeah. the goggles and, you know, that was such a cool day. So you, you know, I remember standing there thinking, man, this is like awesome. I can't believe that I'm here shooting that, you know? So, you know, it's slightly different when you're getting a coffee and there's Henry Cavill in the Superman costume uh, standing there having a cup of tea, you know, you're a bit like, oh. Yeah, we're uh, used to that around here. <laughs> but, uh, but no, it's great. You know, it's just, it's just, yeah, the costumes and the costumes, you know, Michael's costumes are amazing. You know, the costumes look incredible. So, yes, um, even when they're not, just when you see random set pictures, they're like, wow, they still look amazing. Like, mm -hmm. not just in the movie in this high definition quality, but like just random set pictures that even like ones that you've shared a lot of on social media, like they just look awesome. And that's just a regular picture. <laughs> So yep. I could imagine in person how that would how that would look. Have have you done have you shot um any additional um pictures for for the for the Snyder cut of Fabian? Zach has been shooting a I think it was roughly 4 minutes of additional stuff. Okay. Um I I didn't travel. I was I'm in the, in England right now and I didn't travel to LA because of covid obviously and the whole situation going on in the world. Right. So um I didn't do those, but uh, yeah, they were shooting that. Okay, they only did like, uh, a couple of days of shooting, I think. Okay, and uh, and uh, my my personal favorite is, as you probably know by the background, is, is Superman. Um, so that's that's I I will I could relate more to Superman. Now, if you ask my wife, she likes both Batman and Superman. I ask her, you can only choose one. She says no. Both of them, and I asked her why. She said, "Well, if I'm in trouble, I, I want Superman to save me, and Bruce Wayne is the billionaire. I can go shopping all the time." So there you go. So she likes <laughs> she likes Batman versus she likes Batman versus Superman. But um, uh, to, to 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 uh to wind it down, um, when you think about in general what you were in 2017, obviously you know setting aside for the COVID 19, because obviously you know the whole world changed. But from that point forward. Did you ever think that you would see this day that we will actually see uh, not just your hard work, but Zach's uh, hard work play out and and the public see it? Did you, did you ever think um, that we will see that movie? In 2017, I never thought that that would ever happen. I thought this is a really unfortunate event. I felt really down. I felt really sad for Zach. And his personal loss, I felt really down about the movie. And I never thought that I would see the film that Zach always wanted to make. So, no. When when did you have a, when did you think, when you said to yourself, wow, this got a shot. We have a shot to see it. When, when did you get that feeling? You know, it's hard to say. I really can't put a time on that. I mean, it's quite a while ago now, you know, but you could mm. you could feel on social media how the presence of it would be not going away and becoming stronger and stronger, and people would talk about it more and more. And if I was posting a picture from, you know, from the set, people would love it. And so you could tell that there's a lot of support for it. So, I mean, that's, you know, I would say maybe late 2018, 2019, early 2019, I think. Okay, and one last question be, uh, for me, and then I, uh, I'll let uh, Ali uh, ask you uh, her last her last question. Um, and I don't know why, but uh, the, 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 I guess this is a popular question. Uh, the fans want to know is, why don't you have a Twitter account? <laughs> because it's enough work just having one account. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got a, I've, got a little, I've got a small baby. I've got a job to do. I've got lots of things going on. I can't, you know, I kind of, I don't know. I just went to Instagram and that was it. So. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Ali. I, I asked your final question. Well, um, before we let you go, instead of asking a question, I just want to say like, thank you so much for joining us in this movement. And I mean, I'm sure you guys were 
already supporting this in a way before it was actually hashtag release the Snyder Cut. Everyone that worked with Zach, I'm sure, in their own way was supporting it before it became such a big thing on social media. But anyway, even after it did, thank you for, you know, not letting us seem like we're just a crazy fandom that's, you know, calling for something that's never going to happen. But people like you showed that there is, you know, there was another movie that we were meant to see. And so you just, I think when you, people like you were sharing pictures and other people that worked on the movie and saying like, no, the fans are not crazy. This was a thing, you know, I think that just helped us stay motivated to keep doing, you know, all these crazy things, flying the airplanes and, you know, getting the Times Square billboard and all this stuff and making videos or whatever it is, you know? So I just want to say thank you for helping us in that way. And like you have said, like, yeah, the fans brought this. No, to, thank you. Thank you to all of you guys. You for, yeah. yeah. We can't wait to see your beautiful work. So yes, I'm happy yes. for you and Zach and everyone that just gets to share this with us finally. So, And, and, and Tony wants to know, Fabian, are you looking forward towards uh, Matt, uh, Matt Reed's new Batman? Thank you very much. Uh, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure F F Fabian is. A, he said in the beginning of the show he likes watching movies. So I'm. I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm pretty sure Fabian I is going to be. Looking forward. I'm very looking forward to to it. Okay. Well, Fabian, I I, I want to thank you so much for really really joining me. Um, you took an hour of your time uh, to talk to us uh, to get uh, to let us to get to know about you. Um, obvious guys, there's certain questions I could not ask, uh, cause you know, obvious, even if he didn't know, he, he can't tell us anyway. So I don't want to put him on the spot. I did try, you know, towards the end about, you know, what project and all that stuff. So, uh, we'll, we'll find out soon enough guys. So, uh, Fabian, thank you so much for really, really, jo um, uh, joining us and, uh, thank you uh so hopefully, much. Thank you. You know, hopefully we could do this again and next year after the standard cut is released. Okay. We'll do it again when the Snyder cuts out. Thank you, guys. Thanks yeah. for all your help and support. And um, stay safe. And yes. sorry for messing you around with the timing. No, 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 don't worry about it. No, I appreciate you coming on. So don't, don't, you, yes. you don't apologize. You don't apologize for that. You have no idea how big it is for me and, and for Ali. So it's a pleasure to speak with you. And we will always work around your schedule. So, so no worries. Yes. Thank, thank you so thank much. You very much. Take thank care, you. guys. Thank you. Bye -bye. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Guys, that was uh, Fabian who uh, joined us on Ali. Also, I want to thank you for, um, you know, at the last minute. I I, I, I checked my email and and, and uh, I'm like 730 and it just, it didn't, it didn't dawn me. But now I know, now I know now when I invite him again, is that UK time or is that <laughs> United States time? So yeah. um, what, what did you learn with, uh, with the, and, and sorry, it, it asked, and, and I want to clarify something. It was actually me putting on mute because there was a lot of echo in the background. So what I was oh, no, doing. That's okay. Um, I was muting my mic when one of you guys was talking. Oh, okay. Perfect. No, it's fine. If you heard an echo, then yeah, it's totally fine. I was okay. watching it to see if it was muted or not. So yeah, it's fine. Okay, perfect. Um, was there anything that you that you learned about Fabian? Because I, I I learned a lot. So what what, what is it that that what's your takeaway uh, speaking with Fabian? Yeah, just that. I mean, he's obviously really passionate about what he does. He has a lot of respect for um, not just Zack Snyder, but the people that he works with. And it's obvious that he, I mean, just the fact that he cried. And now when he mentioned it, I remembered reading about that. Yeah, that me quote too. that he mentioned about crying all the way through the movie, like that's, I mean, I can't even imagine how he would feel for that to, you know, that to happen. Cause just like him, when they, when the trailers came out, they expected just to get that just like we did. So to be part of it and see what happened in theaters, like if us fans were angry and emotional, I can't imagine how that would feel. Oh my gosh. Them, you know, and I know Zach had other things on his mind at the time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for Fabian Wagner, for all these other people who worked with him on the movie. Yeah, it, that's why I was like, it's not over the top, you know, when he said that. I was like, I don't think it is because this is your work, you know. People, for, have, it's not they just, have, mm -hmm. people have no idea. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's easier to say to move on when it's not your work. 
But when you, but it, it, when it's you and you work hard on something and you want to be recognized for your work, yes. uh, and to have it to be ripped out of you, I mean, if 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 you don't care, then you're in the wrong profession. Is what yeah, I told exactly. people. Exactly, and I don't think it's fair for some people to say like, "Well, it's part of the you know it happens all the time in the industry, or whatever." Not to this extent, you know. There might be things that don't get used or what, things get changed or whatever, but this was such. This was just so much different from other movies that, you know, get changed or reshot or whatever. Like this was like a whole other team was brought in, you know, to make it seem like we're still getting Zach's movie and we're not. It's all these other people working on it now, you know, down to the score, like Junkie XL. We finally get to hear his score, like all of these people, you know, yes. that are involved. And so I just, yeah, I can't. It's it's not easy to say move on because it's not just, you know, it's years that they put into this and then to see it in the trailers thinking that they're still, okay, yeah, they're still going to give us all this, you know, and maybe it's not going to be changed as much as people think, but right. then, you know, they were misled as much as we were. So, yeah. Yeah. It, it was kind of, it was kind of hard. And, and Tony, uh, Tony is asking me if, if I have any new scoop, I, I did hear, I, I did hear a couple of things and that's why towards the end, you asked me that uh, you, you heard me ask Fabian, is any, any project you're working on? Can, and it, is it with Zach? I leave it like that. I'm not, I'll I'll let you guys' imaginations. Uh, uh, th 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 there's a reason why I asked that. Um, so, um, as far as scooping, um, I, I you know I I'm I'm toning down on Twitter because uh, people don't understand that uh, scooping. Not everything that you is always going to be 100% correct. Um, so this is why I'm doing a show so we could discuss rumors and disclaimer. This is what's so fun about having a show I, I believe chris Wan was saying that uh that zach likes us to talk about this even if it's not true it keeps the discussion going and rumors guys rumors even in sports when it's trade rumors 90 percent doesn't happen anyway it's just you know it's, it's it's people like to talk about it so um but you know i don't you know i didn't want to you know i kind of you know, I, I I try to get a little bit from Fabian. You know, like what's the next project? And I think I, Ali, yeah, I, I think you're smiling. So I, hopefully, you, I think you know what I'm referring to. Uh, so I try to see, to get a little bit to see whether he could tell us a little bit. Obvious, he can't. So um, I think, guys, I think we're gonna know uh, Fabian's project after the Snyder Cut. I just leave it like that. Uh, so uh, I let I let you guys in my in imaginations take over. But uh, Ali, um, uh, good day, Damien. Um, I wanted to ask you um, since I, I have you on the phone, you know, on 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 the show. Um, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Um, uh, obviously, you know, we we know uh, I know you. Uh, we spoke privately, but I want you know now that we we having a live show. I found out about you. Uh, when you did a trailer with the Justice League trailer and your adorable son. Uh, and I thought that was the most viewed trailer until you told me you just did one. And I just checked it out. 40,000 views. Oh, my gosh. So what made you um, do this reaction trailer? Was it was it did you see something that somebody else do it? I mean, what 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 was your thought process when you started doing live uh, trailer reaction? Are you talking about the first one that you saw? No, not the first that one, but the... when, when you first when, what what made you first started doing live trader? What what what, what oh, came okay. into your mind? Just in general, trailer trailer reaction. Yes. yes. Um well that was when I had started my channel and I watched other people I would watch other people's trailer reactions. Um, especially for, you know, BBS and stuff like that. So it just and I realized that there was like this little like well not little anymore like this community on twitter that would you know talk about these things and i was like i want to kind of be a part of that you know like um so i kind of just started doing it and that was like i said the time when all the marketing was happening for justice league mm -hmm. and so we were seeing stuff often and we were excited and getting you know hyped up about it so that's when i started doing that Okay. Okay. And um, what did your husband think when you started doing that? I told him to do it with me, but he doesn't like to be on camera, really. Really? So, yeah. Why he's not? not? He's not as um. 
I mean, we'll be here doing it. We'll react together. We'll be like, get uh -huh. out. And is he shy? Um, not in person. Not in person. No. I, 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 yeah. Tell, tell, tell your husband that the fandom would like to get to know the man behind the woman. I mean, it's, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's just he could, he could stop by, say you know, say hello, you know, and and because uh, uh, I'm planning on December 26th, if everything goes well, um, I'm planning our, a Wonder Woman celebration with all the negativity, you know, going on that uh, you know being released on HBO Max and, and all that stuff. I know how heartbroken um, Patty Jenkins, you know, is on the normal circumstances. Who doesn't want to watch? I mean, that again, that hard work. They wanted to be realized in the theaters, but again, we're living under a uh, unique situation. So I want to do something special and it's dedicated to uh, mostly the ladies being that I have a married, I'm married to a wonder woman who <laughs> gave me two little wonder womans. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to have a show dedicated to you ladies. So, and, 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 and dedicated to, uh, to uh, Patty Jenkins and Gal Gadot, um and celebrate their hard work so um do you take uh obviously i know superman superman is, is your favorite character um what certain things about superman that you take into your personal life that helps you um that that helps you in your in your daily life hmm, i've never thought about that um besides lifting up the weights <laughs> 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 oh lord <laughs> i think i think henry cavill will be impressed <laughs> we, we gotta we you have to uh, an instagram tag him i think he will be henry cavill if by any miracle chance <laughs> or anybody that knows henry cavill happens to watch this channel please check out ali i mean she's squatting over 200 pounds i mean that's impressive so, uh, but besides that, is there is there anything? I mean, like 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 for me, you know, like I I feel like I'm the protector of my home, you know. I I I protect, you know. I, Superman is the protector; he protects the world. So I take that mindset that I'm protecting my home. I protect my wife. I protect, you know, my, my kids. You know, and sometimes they say I'm over too I'm over too protective, <laughs> but I'd rather be over too protective than not to be than not to be over protected. I always told my kids, you know, when they're young, you may think that I'm over protective, but when you're when you have your kids, you're gonna understand, you know how I you know how I feel. Um, so going going back to the question is what what helps you on 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 the daily grind having a boy and now a daughter. Uh, is there anything about the Superman character that 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 you carry with you? Um, I don't know if there's certain things that I think about consciously, kind of like what Fabian Wagner was saying, that maybe just subconsciously. Um, well, you know what? I think it's probably going to sound weird, but I don't know if it's a direct answer to your question, but like seeing the way my kids react and especially my son like if we watch those movies you know and like when i did that trailer reaction you were talking about um a few years ago like my son was small then he was probably like two and a half and he was already like so into this you know what i mean and so i guess just seeing how he is like there's just something really innocent about the way he reacts when he sees when we if we watch man of steel you know what i mean and i had posted a video on twitter of every time the flight scene the first flight scene comes on in that movie he has to do it you know he has to run get his cape put it on and it's just i don't i don't know how to answer that specifically as far as like in my daily life if i have a certain mindset i guess it's just it's just an emotional, inspirational feeling um, right. if I watch that movie or I see something from that movie. You know what I mean? Yes. It's just, um, there's, you just connect with it the way it was portrayed in Man of Steel. You know, that they brought his human aspect into it of living on Earth and that he is going to, that he had, it would make sense for him to have struggles like that and stuff. He's not just this God character who 
is going to have a perfect life. You know what I mean? They made him so much more relatable in Man of Steel. So that's why I feel so strongly about Henry Cavill being Superman. Because that was probably the first Superman movie or live action Superman that portrayed him that way. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I appreciate so much about it. Well, I mean, lots of other things, but, you know, just to see that there were so many people who became Superman fans based on that movie alone, that it's just, I don't know, it makes it, it's a personal, you know, you just feel connected to it when you see, when you watch it. And, and this is the, and I'm going to attempt to do something. Uh, this is the trailer I'm talking about here. I'm not sure if you could see, if you could see me. Uh, can you see that? Yes. All right. So oh, gosh, I don't like watching myself with other people. All right. Can you I'm not sure if you can hear the volume. Can you hear the volume? Mm. Okay, okay, guys, we're gonna go back a minute. I was sleeping in the job. Sorry, I'm gonna do the reaction video as soon as I could. It's pretty early for me. We literally just woke up like 10 minutes ago. I woke him up to do this reaction video because I know <laughs> he's so video. So say welcome back. We have not seen the Justice League trailer yet. I tried really hard not to watch it because I had all the notifications when I woke up. I had this call from my husband at work because he's freaking out about it. <laughs> so we're going to watch it right now. It might be kind of loud in the background. I, we have surround sound. I want it to be loud. So if he starts screaming and getting all excited, you can still hear it over all that. So let's see. Okay. Ready? Okay. Oh, go ahead. It's kind of dark in here, huh? You guys can see, okay? The light's not... There we go, let's play. Okay, perfect. All right, let's go. Final Justice League trailer. Yeah. And guys, this is what Fabio Wagner was talking about. That that was part of Zack Snyder trailer. Our mouse is messed up. It, like, double the I'm right here so you can see. Butterflies. I literally have butterflies. Oh, Lois, 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 Lois. Oh, okay. Look, 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 look. There's Superman. Avery, you're missing it. You got shy. Your heart broke okay, when you saw that scene, didn't you, huh? It does. I already have. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm going to It still happens. But even more now when we see the, the <gasps> teaser. Avery, look. Oh, you're watching. I can't see you. And my district, they had already changed a lot. They had started making it really red. And oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I could not wait for that. Why I brought you together? Oh my God! Riding over here. Your, oh, sorry. It's your signal that means we have to go now. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what that makes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, 
You want to watch it again? <laughs> so, so Ali, that's how I first knew you by that trailer because um, I, I, I was. I got into this because of the trailer, but I, I wanted to show that one because Fabian was talking about, you know, remember when he said the first three trailers that it was, those was Zach shot. Yeah. And, and it, it, it makes it sad that the trailer, what we saw, it was a totally different, different movie. Did you, when you, when you saw justice league, did, did you feel that? I mean, cause even me, just the music itself, it felt different. Oh yeah. Um, and it's funny. Well, when you had told me that you found me by, I had done, um, a trailer reaction with my son for a, for one of the trailers before that. So that's mm -hmm. the one I thought you're talking about. Um, but yeah, definitely. That's why I was, what I was telling Fabian is that I never understood when people were like, it doesn't exist and blah, blah, blah. Because even if you, were as involved with the fandom, you know, like, oh, they, they leaked this or this got dropped that it was supposed to be in the movie. All you would have, like, at the very basic level of it, all you would have to do is watch the trailers and see this is not there. This was cut. This was changed. This is, you know, and it's like there's a trailer that, like, pretty much the whole trailer was either cut or changed by the time we got the theatrical version. And the thing was that one that you just showed was, like, the last trailer, Mm -hmm. So it was like right before the movie came out. So even it wasn't just the beginning, you know, the first trailers that we got when Zach was still kind of attached to it, even leading up to the release of the movie, they were still showing stuff that was not going to be in the movie or that had been changed in reshoots. And like a lot of the stuff in trailers was changed in reshoots as if we weren't going to notice it from how it was in the trailer versus the theatrical version. Mm -hmm. So I had tried to convince myself that I liked the movie because leading up to it, we were made to believe that this was still going to be Zach's movie. This is what he wanted. These were the changes, you know, whatever was changed in the movie were his decisions. No, <laughs> we know that oh, that's not true. But when the movie came out, we still didn't know all what had happened. But then, you know, I saw it twice and I've never seen it again, except for trailers and clips here and there that I've watched, um, like on YouTube or whatever. But <clears throat> no, it's just, no, See, I was just trying to convince myself, but no, it's not. No, I was like, there were so many things. And then over the days or weeks after you watch it, you start remembering stuff that you were looking forward to or things you remembered from the trailer that weren't there. And it's just, mm -hmm. it just became more and more obvious as time went on. Yeah, um, I, I I remember when because uh, I didn't I didn't see the whole thing. Um, I saw maybe like the first twenty minutes, thirty minutes, um, because I knew something is just something didn't feel right. Um, the the just it it just it didn't feel like a like a Zack Snyder movie. It felt it felt like a Marvel movie. Um, and nothing against Marvel. I mean, Marvel uh, are are they good for what they do for their demo for their demographical people, you know, which is the children. And there's nothing wrong with that. And even you know adults, you know that that, that likes it. So I I have nothing, you know, it works for them. But DC characters, you know, this is what's my whole big thing is that we're not Marvel. And it drives me crazy when I hear people saying what well, uh, character development. I said, well, number one, uh, define character de development. And when they explain that to me, they explain it to me in the Marvel blueprint. And my whole thing is, is that if, if DC did that, then they'll be called copycats. So they can't win. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I agree. Um, there's, like, I agree with you. There's what Marvel and Disney do, what they do, it works for them. That's why mm -hmm. they can release this huge slate of movies and series, you know? Because, like, just all the stuff they released the other day, because what they do works for them. And I grew up, I love Disney from the time I can remember as far right. back as I did. You know, like, that was mm -hmm. my thing growing up. I loved all the Disney characters. I watched the Marvel movies. Yes, I go watch them in theaters, and I like them, except for a few that I was, like, Absolutely. I hate, I know, you know, can but, I take a guess? 
Can I, <laughs> yeah. take, can I take it? Okay. Um, Thor Ragnarok. Yes. Okay. Uh, the, to it's me, um, I mean, Hulk is not meant to be funny, goofy. Same thing with Thor. It's just, it, 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 yeah. it just drove me crazy. Uh, what about Iron Man uh, 2? Did you like Iron Man 2? I'll watch them, but the first one is the best. Yes. The yes. first one is the most rewatchable. Um, the other one was Captain Marvel. Oh, Captain Marvel. I didn't cool. even have interest in watching it in theaters, but a friend invited us, so we went. But I'm never going to watch it again. Yeah, I, I got... I, you see, here's the thing. I I, I don't want to get... I don't want to sound too political, but um, I, I just... I get turned off when, for example, about the Joker, when they, when you had the media saying, don't go see the Joker because it's about a white man with a gun killing. And I'm screaming, and I'm like, how many movies have been made with a white man with a gun yeah. killing people? And you guys never made a big deal out of it, okay? Yeah. And uh, and I started to, and it's it's sad when you gotta do when I when you know when people gotta do this. So I'm saying to myself, uh, is there a political reason why they're saying that? Is because and I started, and it's a shame. And regardless, you can support who you want to support, whether you're the left, right, I don't care. You know, I I I, I miss the days. That you could be a left and I could be a right, or I could be a left, you could be a right, and we could sit down, dis disagree, have a good old fashioned disagreement, and still love each other and move on. I miss, I miss those times. So you know, I got turned off by it. I got turned off by Brie Larson stating that, um, you know, that she was just, uh, attacking the men. I'm like, I, I don't want, I don't want to hear that. I mean, you know, are, are there bad men out there? Absolutely, they are. But to lump every single one of us. No, to me that to me that turned me off. That's why yeah. I, that's why I didn't see Captain Marvel. Um, and the Joker, it made me want to see the Joker even more. <laughs> yeah, I don't. That's why I had liked Todd Phillips' comment about, well, John Wick just had come out not too long before that, or whatever movie he was talking about. You know, a male with gun killing a bunch of people for no reason. Joker uh -huh. was not meant to be to focus or um, celebrate violence. And I know that, okay, at the time that it was released, it was very sensitive because of stuff that had already happened recently in the, you know. Um, no, no, I know, I know. I, yeah, yeah. I, I, so I understand that. But to say like, you know, oh, it's going to be, there's going to be crazy people at the theaters and, you know, it's going to be dangerous and, what happened at the, you know, when the Dark Knight had come out? Well, that didn't really have anything to do with just because Joker was going to have his own movie now. You know, that Joker movie was very different from, you know, just because it was a villain origin story. It was a lot more psychological than, you know, just focusing on, oh, he's just running around killing a bunch of people. You know, it wasn't like that. Um, it was sad, in my opinion. Like, I felt like it was a sad movie you know like i don't i didn't get the impression that they were trying to celebrate violence or anything like that like more than anything joaquin phoenix's performance stood out to me more than you know oh he's just i just you know it was it was not like that at all and like you said brie larson as a person i mean not that i know her on the personal level but just the way when she was making those comments on Twitter and stuff like that, yeah. like we were talking about, I just don't get the feeling that I like her, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like we don't know these people on a personal level, but you get a sense of them. Yeah. When they're on social media, when they're doing interviews, things that they say, you, you get a sense of them and yeah, you don't have to like them on a personal level to like their movies, mm -hmm. but you know, I just I wasn't that interested in it, and like you said, it kind of turns you off. And yeah, it it tur it, 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 it it turned me off because you know it's like uh, you you're I'm sure you you're married to to a wonderful man, and you're thinking, wait a minute, you because she said she basically said everyone, and you say and you saying to yourself, wait a minute, now you talk about my man yeah. because you know he's a good man. And same thing, same thing. You know, are we perfect? No, and you know, obvious. That we know that there are some idiots out there, um, yeah, but that's but, but yeah, but it's life. But you know, you don't lump um, every man in there. And I have, I have two girls. I, I have two girls. I, you know, uh, two daughters. You know, twenty one, and you know, they're going to be twenty two now, and one just turned nineteen, both in college. 
you know, and I, you know, am I perfect? No, but I try, I did the best I could, you know, to teach him about, to teach him about, about life. So it's just, it really, it really, it, tur it turned me off. And, you know, so, and again, I don't want to get, you know, too political, but, you know, I, I just, I just wish, you know, that um, we could, you know, obviously state your opinion, but don't, don't generalize everything. So I haven't, I haven't watched Captain Marvel. I don't, I don't think I would. And then, and another one that really turned me off was Birds of Prey. You know, yeah, um, yeah. I you know, Kathy, I you know, Kathy, you know what, you know, some of the stuff, you know, that, that what she was saying. So I just, I, I just think, you know, it's just, you know, movies are, are movies are meant to entertain us. And, and, um, I just, it's it just that there, there is a critic in Rotten Tomato, um, that she said she didn't like the Joker. And I read her comments. Now check this out, Ali. She said she didn't like the Joker because. He was a psychopath, narcissist, evil person, and I'm screaming. And I'm screaming literally at my at my phone. Says, "Hey, you just described the Joker. That's who the Joker's supposed to be." Right. If you don't know the character, then please. I mean, I literally screaming. You just described the Joker. <laughs> I mean, but this is what the Joker is. Now, when my family saw the Joker, um. They felt bad for him. My wife yes. felt bad for him. Uh, yes. My kids felt bad for him. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that's where the people had the problem. Um, you know, the people that didn't like the movie, the small people that didn't like the movie, that they made people feel sorry for him. Well, that's his version. That's his take. But I mean, yeah. what do you think? Yeah, and that's what I was kind of saying is that, yes, he's those things that you just said. Um, but they took it from a different point of view in the movie. And like I was saying, yeah, there were parts that made me feel sad, you know, because like not to sympathize with him killing people. That's not, that's why I think people get it twisted. Um, but the fact that he had these psychological issues. And like I said, I think it was more the performance of Joaquin Phoenix. Like it felt so real. Yeah. It yeah. felt bad for the, per for him, not, as the Joker, but just as a person. Um, for instance, when he's on stage, well, when he, you know, and they, and he's just, he can't hold back his, his, his laughter. And everyone's kind of just staring at him. Like that scene, I felt sad. Like it was just so sad in my opinion. And when he figured out that his neighbor, who he thought he had this relationship with, that was on his head, that it was saddening for me, you know? Because I wasn't thinking of him at that moment as a joke, the Joker who's going to, you know, go and kill these people at this talk show. No, but just as a person, the way they portrayed him as a person, that I think was what, you know, felt sad for him. And Joaquin Phoenix just made that feel very real, you know, but would I feel sad for him if he went and said it when he went and sat down on the talk show and shot these people live on air? No, 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 obviously. You know, like I didn't feel sad for him as a villain. But just as a person, mm -hmm. I, yeah. But I think people kind of put, you know, oh, like I said, oh, we should feel bad for people who go and kill people. No, of course not. <laughs> you know, I live in El Paso. That happened where I live. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I never would have, I mean, no one ever does think that that's going to happen where they live. But like, no, you're not going to sympathize with a person like that, you know. But I don't think that's what their whole point was of showing him in that light in the movie i think people just kind of took that and ran with it mm -hmm. um but john wick i mean what he did in his movie you know he was kind of out for revenge in the first movie and what about what about scarface what about commando what about what I mean. yeah there's all these movies that you could say that about but i think it was just the bad timing of things that were going on when that movie came out that they were kind of just like using it as, you know, Oh, don't go watch this movie. And you no, know. but DC does. I mean, if it would have been a Marvel movie or a Marvel character, I don't no. think it would have gotten. No, I, I, it wouldn't. Uh, Tony says the difference is Marvel and Kevin has, a, uh, uh, has had a plan since Iron Man one and they have executed to a T and DC have been dumpster fire. Well, here's a problem with that take Tony. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's, here's the problem with that take. Uh, you said Iron Man 1, okay? You gave it a chance. 
when Man of Steel came out, you didn't like Man of Steel. So to me, you're comparing apples to oranges. I mean, uh, DC did they have a plan, and guess what? Now it's been restored. So now we're going to see the Flash. Now we're going to see uh, Ben Affleck, <clears throat> Batman. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Now we're going to see uh, Henry Cavill. Um, now we're going to see Wonder Woman 84 and possibly Wonder Woman 83. Uh, Justice League 1 does well. We're going to get Justice League 2 or 3. The problem is, here's the problem, Tony. Okay, there is a plan. The problem is that you don't like it. That's the problem. Well, also, I think the problem was that they had a plan that Zack Snyder started, but then the studio reacted to the criticisms instead of the fan base. So they, okay, we're not going to do that anymore. Okay, Justice League needs to be different, needs to be lighter, needs to have jokes, blah, 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 because they only paid attention to what people didn't like, you know, the people that came out and were freaking out about BVS and the fact that, you know, Superman killed Zod and blah, 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 which all Marvel movies, they kill people and not just the villains, you know? And Ali and, and shoot and blow up things. I mean, yes, they do kill people in Marvel movies. So I don't know where people are freaking out about that. But oh, and Superman killed Zod in the old Christopher Reeves movie as well. Yes, and unpowered the, Zod. So anyway, in the Richard in the, in the Richard Donald cut, Richard Donald oh. actually said he actually said that Zod dies. He actually said that uh there there is a quote verbatim. When you watch the Richard Donald cut. Mm -hmm. uh, it says that uh, his general Zod died, and and to your point, Ali, the people who who had a problem with Man of Steel and more so a BVS were mostly bloggers and yeah. people who were Marvel fan. And to me, when you have a vision, you stick with it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. and that's why I was. Ups it's just upsetting that. The studio, instead of supporting and just sticking to what they they knew what Zack Snyder was setting up. They knew where he was going with, you know, Man of Steel, BVS, down the line. They knew where it was leading up to. And they were, you know, they let him start it, Man of Steel, BVS. Then they started freaking out that we got to change it. We got to be more like Marvel. We got to do this and that. So they did have a plan. And Justice League was also supposed to set up all of these other movies for these other characters. So there was a plan back when, you know, they released a slate a long time ago at one of the San Diego Comic Cons. They had this plan. Mm -hmm. Slowly, they started changing it. You know, we're not going to do this anymore. That's on the back burner. All this stuff because they're just reacting to the criticisms instead of listening to this huge fan base. Obviously, there's a huge fan base because now... We're getting Zack Snyder's Justice League, and that wouldn't have happened without this huge fan base. And Ali, they to your point, have a plan. they yeah. just were afraid to follow through with it. That's the thing about Marvel, too. Like, they just commit and they do it. There you go. Because their fans are gonna like what they do with DC. They just, they, you know, they freaked out. They're like, okay, we can't, but it should not have to be like Marvel. If Marvel did not do what they did the way they did it, where they had this linear plot where all their movies surround the same, they all affect each other. DC does not have to do that, you know, and people wouldn't expect DC to do that if Marvel hadn't done it. The only reason people are saying there's no plan or that, yes, there was, you know, Zack Snyder had all that. His Ali, movies have a continuity, you know what I mean? And, so and Ali, and, and to your point, Ali, you remember before BVS, because uh, I want to address this to Tony because he's saying that they didn't have a plan. There was a there was a slate of movie. You had Justice League yes. two and three. You had a cyborg movie. Yep. You had you had you have they have more movies coming out mm -hmm. than 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 Marvel. So um and then now Tony's saying so they messed up their plan. Marvel did not again. I just said <laughs> Tony, you're not you're not you're not lit you're not really understanding or I don't know whether you're not understanding or not listening to us. Marvel, Disney, Disney gave, here's the thing, Disney gave Kevin the authority, the final word, and stuck by him. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what the critics said, 
Yeah. They're stuck by him. Iron Man 1, when it came out, it didn't make money. The Incredible Hulk, uh, when it came out, it didn't make money. But they, they had a vision. They stuck with it. The studio hired Zack Snyder, and they got involved. Yeah, the, they you are comparing, you, yes. yeah, you compare with apples to oranges. They didn't let the man finish his vision. Now, Frank, now that we got these snakes out of Warner Brothers, now we're going to see mm -hmm. the vision that what was started. Pause, not stop. Remember that. Now we're gonna see it into fruition. What yeah. is? What, what do you mean by that? Well, now we got Flashpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, now we got Justice League one. We're gonna have Aquaman two, Shazam two, um, Black Adam, uh, Black Adam. Uh, I'm telling you guys, we're gonna get our, our Batman versus um, uh, Deathstroke. Henry Cavill is eventually gonna get his own Superman um, movie. And guys, if you don't think we're gonna get Justice League two and three, then you're not paying attention. So that's what I just named ten. So what are you talking about, uh, Tony? Yeah. That's the thing is that Marvel just they're letting their directors do what they want to do. You know what I mean? They're just mm. we're going to do these movies and that's it. We're going to do them. WB had, OK, this is all the stuff we're going to do over the next 10 years, whatever. But as soon as they got this controversy from Man of Steel and BVS, they freaked out and they reacted to that instead of listening to what the fans were like. No, just continue. A hardcore fan. Doing. Yes, they didn't pay attention to that. And look how long it took just for them to say, okay, we're going to release the Snyder Cut. You know, it took all these four years. By the time the movie comes out, it's going to be five years since Zach shot it. And so that's what it took for some reason. I don't know. WB is just not. <laughs> I mean, how long are we going to have to? Hopefully they're already going to have, you know, hopefully they know they're going to do the Batman or whatever, but they're just not announcing it yet. So that's the thing is that Marvel's just like, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do this. Our fans are going to love it. WB is not listen was, was not listening to their fans. They were listening to the critics and that's what they reacted to mess up this whole universe that Zach was laying the foundation for. So. And, and to your point, and to your point, Ali, um, I have many Marvel friends mm -hmm. that when flashpoint was announced. Yeah. Oh, it's kind of dumb. Three Batmans. That who's the real Batman? That doesn't make sense. No, that does not make sense. That, that does not make sense. Three Batman doesn't make sense. You're gonna have two super two Superman movie. That doesn't make sense. And then when Disney announced Spider Man yeah. three with mm -hmm. three Spider Man, oh that's great. Yeah. Those same people that bash Flashpoint are now praising are now praising Spider Man three. I mean, if if you don't see that. I mean, so this is this is now. I'm glad that the studios, uh, more Warner Media and AT and T, are now. And again, I said this on my show last year. I pleaded with Anson of be different. Yeah. Be, be different. Um, I'm, I'm I'm probably gonna play that again. Um, in in the new future, so people could see that the, I called this. I called this last year. I was asking it to be on HBO Max to do mini series, yeah. um, mm -hmm. on 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 Ben Affleck. So. On uh, my thoughts on on Dark Side, uh, can't wait. I I can't wait. I I really 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 can't wait. I'm 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 interested. But the the, the plot the plot that I'm mostly uh, I, there's a lot of plots in there. Obviously, the Superman Resurrection. Obviously, I'm a, we are Superman fans, so we want to see um exactly where he's at. But one of the stories I'm also um, that I'm I'm most intrigued by is uh, Cyborg, Karen Bryson, and Ray Fisher. You know the yeah. interaction between a mom and a son. So that's yeah. something that I'm looking forward towards. And then going back again, going back to you know the hypocrisy, is that the media and 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 everybody was killing AT and T one immediate for releasing movies on HBO mm -hmm. Max. Yeah. But when Disney just did it right now, they're praising them. Yeah, I don't understand that either. That dual that. Even if Disney Plus is like, okay, some of the movies that we're releasing on Disney Plus and theaters, yes, it's going to be a premium product like Mulan. So just because they're charging extra for mm -hmm. you to watch it, even if you're a subscriber, that doesn't make it any, I mean, it's sort of different, but HBO Max already has a higher subscription price. So it's not that different. You know, Disney Plus is on the lower end of the pricing range, but I don't think mm. it should be $30. Like... If they're going to Mulan was not in theaters and on Disney Plus. 
So I guess they maybe thought, okay, it's fair if we charge this much. Because it's not going to be in theaters. But these other movies that they're going to do that with are going to be in theaters and Disney+. Plus. So it shouldn't be $30 on Disney+, Plus, in my opinion. Well, here, here, here's a here's the thing. I, I I think kind of different. I think I think the the market and the public decides what does well. See, I I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem if Warner Media if HBO Max says, uh, we're gonna play Wonder Woman eighty four for the price of twenty nine ninety nine, and the reason we're doing that's because we took a financial hit making a movie. We was gonna make any theaters. I, I would understand that because I'm I'm saying to myself, okay, you know, I, I'm I'm looking at it from from the business standpoint, you know, yeah. that they that they had a lot invested. So that, to me, that doesn't bother. And, but again, you know what changed that? The market. If people That's is not, what I'm saying. yeah, yeah, if, if people's not gonna buy it, then yeah. they, they they're gonna change the, they're gonna change their strategy. So maybe this is maybe this is what HBO Max did. Maybe they saw what Disney tried to do, mm-hmm. put more along on there. People, people, it didn't do well. People didn't buy it, and they didn't want to risk it. So they look at it. Okay, which is more important, us making thirty bucks or us upping our our, our subscription? And it went up from it went up from eight to twelve million subscribers in less than a week. Now, what does that tell you? Yeah, I, and it's I was continue. one of them. It's going to continue because Wonder Woman eighty four is about to drop, and then mm-hmm. if they know that over the whole course of the year. They're going to release these movies on there while they're in theaters for the first month or whatever. People are going to continue to, you know, their their subscriptions are going to continue to rise. But I don't know. I just, I don't have a problem with it. I had a problem with Christopher Nolan's reaction. <laughs> I, yeah, I did. I, 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 I have, I, I, I'm with you. Um, I'm with you, Ali. The only reason I'm with you, because I, I said to you, Chris, what you wanted them Happened. to do. Yes. No, you, 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 you want them to sit on something for a year, for, for, or for two years. I mean, I, I, Ali, I'm not sure if you know about this. Back in April, uh, I tweeted it out. This was in April that I was hearing that Wonder Woman was going to be get moved towards the end of the year. Mm-hmm. I heard this back in April. Yeah. And eventually it got moved from July to August to August to, to December 25th. Yeah. This is, what, this is what my person told me. Best case scenario. He said, "Best case scenario in a perfect world is going to take the movie theater minimum a year to recover." Now hold on. So if that's the case, and he says a year after the vaccine is released, this yeah. is what he told me back I- in April. Mm-hmm. In mm-hmm. April. Now the vaccine just got released yesterday. It's going to be implemented in in December. Remember, we might say one year, one year minimum. Best case scenario. So now you want the studios to sit on those movies when we don't know what's going to what's going to happen in 2 years. You don't know that. You, you 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 they did they did the best that they could and and guys, here's a clue. They moved Batman from 20 yeah. to, to 2022. What does that tell you? They're mm-hmm. banking on the one year yeah. that my my guy told me back in April that they're banking on that's going to take them to f- to fully recover. That's best case scenario. Yeah. Even- and th- Go ahead. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. And that's what I was saying in the videos I was making about it is that Christopher Nolan, I get it. You know, I understand that. Okay. But does he not think that like, well, he was saying these movies are meant to be seen in theaters. Yeah, we know. Yeah. That. Do you think that Warner Media, you think they don't want to have, you know, these huge theatrical runs of course they do they want that <laughs> they're a movie studio but they're like the at&t for um i mean the ceo at&t ceo we have to make our decisions based on what consumers are doing right now and probably for you know the near future they're going to be getting their entertainment through streaming services a lot you know and christopher nolan was saying well they're going to start people are going to want to go back to theaters yeah but it's going to take time for people to start going back to theaters as much as they were before. And if they sit on these movies, like you said, for a year or two, there's not going to be any theaters left for them to release those big titles in. You know, they're going to continue to shut down if they don't have anything to show. I mean, at least it gives people the choice. 
you know, if they have yeah. a theater near them that they can want, they want to go, they feel comfortable, they can, fine. If they don't want to and they can have HBO Max in the U.S. or, you know, as it becomes more available, they can do that too. But at least it gives theaters something to kind of keep them afloat until they can have, you know, yeah, we, the auditoriums we, again because, you know, it's just, I just thought it was really, like, unsympathetic of him. And he got his movie in theaters. And look how did, and how did it do? And it's a huge movie that should have been close to a billion dollars if it had been a normal year. Mm -hmm. You know, and people were packing out theaters the way they're supposed to. It should have been a huge mm -hmm. money maker this year. Correct. But, you know, he forced them. To, I mean, even Ann Sarnoff said <laughs> the release of Tenet in theaters was one of the things we considered to push, you know, and make this decision to do the dual release. That was one of their factors in making this decision. I apologize, so I Tony. See, I don't see how he could say that after what she said. Like, that was one of the reasons we made this decision. Now, I get them being upset that they didn't have a heads up. You know, like, Legendary Entertainment, these directors that, you know, whoever's going to be affected by it. Ali, here's my question. Here's my, here's my question to you. Mm -hmm. Are we sure they didn't get a heads up? Because well, we, we're only we're, we're only saying the same thing. I see. I I don't know. I mean, someone had commented on my video. I'm sure the lawyer for AT and T Warner Brothers. I'm sure they made sure that this is legally going to be okay as far as contracts. So if they didn't give people a heads up, then I could see why they'd be frustrated about that. It would just be a professional courtesy if they didn't. See, I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't buy, I don't buy that notion. I'm gonna tell you why. Okay, uh, okay. this is th this is just me. Uh, uh, and again, Tony, I do apologize. For, your name is Tony, not Frank, and you could call me Jose. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, to me, what I'm reading between the lines, uh, there is no way that Warner Brothers is not going to consult their investors. They they, they 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 have to they have they have to. I believe the problem was is that they consulted with them. They told them no, don't release it. They said they was going to release it, and they did. Did they did? It could be true. They, I believe they're angry that they release it in theaters because to me it does not make logical sense that they're saying they were not giving a heads up. No. You were the, the your problem was that you didn't like them releasing it because if you yeah. if you read that if you read that do you take them not being not being notified or you take it more they upset that they released in the theaters which one which one holds more Relax. weight which one holds more weight when you be, well, yeah I guess that could be a possibility because in the article about legendary entertainment being upset they were saying that they weren't that Warner Brothers was not clear with their intentions. So maybe, I guess it's possible that they had this discussion with them and told them this is what we're considering, but maybe they didn't tell them when they were like, okay, we reached a final decision on what we're going to do. So maybe they were aware of the possibility, but maybe they didn't know that Warner Brothers was like, no, we're definitely, I don't know. I really don't know, but I, believe I think that it's going to help like, like the at t guy said, the CEO, it's not helping anyone to push these movies back a year, two years. It's not. They're not going to get their money back any sooner, you know? And so I just don't see how they're not seeing that. <laughs> I don't understand how they're missing it's, that point. It's it's a it's a business. And, and this is what I said on the Zyrider show. You don't think that if the studios thought they could have made money releasing yeah. it in the theaters, you, you don't think they would have done it? I'm telling people think logically here. Let let's think logically here. Ali, you you're you're the CEO. You're answering off right now. You're at, you're answering off right now. You're the CEO of AT and T, and you have John Doe. Let's let's put your husband the the CEO of one of Meteors. So you guys are consulting. You guys did all your math. You guys did all your research. You don't think if. If you would, if you would have made money releasing in our theaters, you would have done it. Yeah, exactly, and that's what she's saying. What happened with Tenet was part of the reason they did this was be, or they're going to do this, is because they know Tenet should have made a ton of money. 
pulled in huge audiences, but it didn't. And they that's why they're saying they have to go based off of, they have to look at what people are actually doing, not just what they want to be able to do, not just what, you know, consumers want to be able to do. Of course, we all want to go see these huge movies in theaters. They want to release them in theaters, but, or exclusively in theaters, I guess I should say. But, and if, it's going to have challenges because it's not been done before. It's new. It's uncharted territory. There's going to be probably things that happen that they maybe not have even thought of yet, you know, to expect. And of course, they're going to take a financial hit. But it's worse, in my opinion, than not releasing them at all for a year or more. Yeah, because you, you just know? don't. They, 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 they don't know. Yeah, they, they don't know what's going to happen to theaters by the time some of these big movies are going to be able to come out in theaters only. Which is why I don't understand why some theaters are upset too. Which I kind of get it. I get a part of it. But at least they're going to have these movies sooner than they probably would have. You know, if they weren't doing this dual release. So, I don't know. I mean... <laughs> And 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 and, and Ali, this is another thing that I, I haven't heard mentioning that's driving me crazy that, that that people are not also thinking about. So, for example, let's say Wonder Woman, they're gonna hold that for two years. Let's say they hold that for two years. Then, what if there's a Justice League two that's gonna be released in the same year? It stops other projects that's connected to that universe. It, it yeah. affects everything. Then that project gets pushed back more. Then it gets yeah. pulled back more. And then people get older. Uh, people get older. You, yeah. you, you, don't, you don't know. You know what can happen. So th this is this is why they needed they needed uh, uh, to do this now. Uh, mm -hmm. Tony, uh, Louis, could it could, could it be AT&T that made that decision? And Warner Brother had to go along with it. Well, yes, that's oh, that's possible. But but you know what? Yeah. Who's the boss? Yeah. Who's the boss? AT&T. Mm -hmm. AT&T bought out Warner Brothers, so it's it's very it's very possible. I, I, um, okay, Jose. <laughs> yeah, of course it's possible. I mean, Warner Brothers, you know, well, they could. Well, it seems like because Anne Sarnoff's the the CEO of Warner Brothers, right? Mm -hmm. So it seems like she was kind of on board with that if it was AT&T suggestion, because she said Tenet was part of the reason we made this decision. So I don't know if they're necessarily forced into it if she said that because, you know, they have to look at the numbers and that's not going to lie. And, you know, it's no, it's obvious that people, yeah, they are getting a lot of their, I mean, that's what we're doing. We're streaming stuff at home, you know, and if it gives people that, that option to feel comfortable and watch these movies at home and feel you know, not feel anxious to go to the theater, then, you know, that's, I don't, I don't think that that's a bad thing. And I, if it's everyone, what Christopher Nolan, what I thought was really unsympathetic about mm -hmm. his response was that every business, no matter what food, entertainment, mm -hmm. fitness, like every industry education, they've all had to adjust to this. They've all had to change model their their business model or their you know their service what however it gets distributed everyone mm -hmm. has had to adjust to this in some way and that has not excluded entertainment so I, you know what i mean i mean businesses have had to close temporarily or off and on you know restaurants can't have people sitting inside sometimes or you know everything has had to make changes or adjust to how people are consuming all these different services and products. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't they have to adjust too? You know? I, I think I think uh th like you were saying that that Chris uh he's speaking he's speaking as a director that wanted uh that want movies to be released in theaters. Mm -hmm. Um but um and there's well, no <laughs> Yeah, and and this and this is this is what I'm a little bit uh, perplexed is that the studio lost money mm -hmm. by releasing it in theaters. They would have made more money if they if they would have did it the way what they're doing it in Wonder Woman. Yeah, I uh, agree. And, and 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 to me, um, uh, to me, uh, um, that Christopher expecting the studios to hold the movie for a year or two or three mm -hmm. years 
to me yeah. is 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 unreasonable because again we don't know how long this pandemic is is gonna last mm -hmm. uh and i just and i and 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 again I, guys I, I and i said this in april um that this is the best case scenario a year um a year and it this it, it looks like it's gonna take more than a year for the movie theaters to fully recover yeah because they're not going to be able to have packed out auditoriums so i had mentioned this too on my channel even if warner brothers had not made the decision if they're like okay we're still going to release all these in theaters next year just assume that they didn't get pushed back again they're sticking mm -hmm. to those release dates for next year movie theaters have to have a limited capacity so even you know not having packed out auditoriums that's still going to affect how much they're making on these movies you know because they're not going to have sold out you know they're not going to have packed out auditoriums for these movies they have to do staggered show times and all of that so even that limited capacity factor if people choose to go you know if they feel comfortable enough going it's still going to affect them financially because they're not going to be selling as many tickets per showtime as they would in a normal circumstance even if they were just like, no, we're not going to put them on HBO Max. So even if they hadn't done that, the limited capacity great and the point. sales is still going to affect them financially. Great point. Great point. So for so for for those that don't know what Ali, you know, is saying, um, and uh, she she's saying that when you go to the movie theaters, let's say a movie theater holds five hundred people, they're gonna they're gonna separate, you know, put six feet and only do two hundred, you know, or yeah. one. Because when you, um, like what Cinemark is doing, mm -hmm. when you buy your tickets online and you reserve your seats, the seats around your party size are automatically going to be locked. So people can't sit there. You know, so people are going to be spaced out. They're not going to be, you're not going to have a packed out auditorium. They're doing staggered show times. So there's not so many people in the theater at one time overlapping between show times. You know, so... Either way, it would have hurt them financially because they're not packing out auditoriums. Like movie theaters don't make money off of ticket sales. You know, that's why concession is so expensive. Yeah. So all that money from ticket sales goes to the studio. So it would have hurt, it would have hit them financially regardless. Yeah. Um, and so let's just say that everything gets back to normal 2022. Okay. And when I mean back to normal, I'm talking about people are not comfortable, no mask, anything like that. That means, and I think Grace Randall tweeted it out. There's a reason why they moved Batman from 2021 to 2022. I agree. That could be the movie that could uh, springboard back everything back into normalcy. Uh, yeah. That that Matt Reeves Batman making a billion dollars because. Even people who don't like uh, Matt Reeves um, vision, they, they could still consider uh, Ben Affleck's uh, Batman as their Batman. They're going to want to go just to go, just to hang out. I want to see it. Like, am I, was I sad that, you know, we're not going to get Ben Affleck's? Yeah. But I guess in hindsight, you know, I wouldn't have wanted what happened with Justice League to happen to Ben Affleck's movie. Mm -hmm. So... You know, I think it was probably best that he decided to not even take that chance with the Batman. And guess what? Now we get to have him back in Justice League, Flashpoint, most likely um, on HBO Max. And if his Batman doesn't get to have that project on theaters, I'm fine with it. You know, I get to watch it at home. If it's a series, that's even more than a movie. Can you I know? tell you what I'm hoping for? If it's four or five hours, that's even more than what you'd get in a movie. So I hope that they go the series route with him too. If they don't, I'm still happy. <laughs> but Yeah. Can I, can yeah. I tell you what I'm hoping for? This is what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping for, um, and guys, you know, we're gonna, uh, cause I know Ali has, has a family to attend to and I'm diabetic. I'm getting a little bit hungry. So, <laughs> so I'm definitely, uh, I, I'm gonna, um, um, uh, you know, like the next, I will say the next, uh, five to 10 minutes, we, we, we're going to uh, drop off. Um, but um, I, what I'm hoping for is that they do a release 
in the theaters, a Batman versus Deathstroke, and then an end credit to set up the series on HBO Max. Okay. Um, so yeah. I think that would cool. I think that would be that I think that would be the best of both worlds. Right. Uh, you 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 put the, you put something in theaters to make it a special event, and if you want to continue, or you could start it off as a mini series, and then when you okay. could do a grand finale in it in in in, in the theaters. Yeah. So that's that's um, that's something that I think that I could I think is gonna um you know could, could do well. So um, now that we're gonna wrap this up, um, Ali, is there um anything um uh, that you look besides the Snyder cut? Uh, do you think, uh, what do you think is going to happen on December 25th? What Grace Randolph was talking mm -hmm. about? Do you think it's a, do you think it's a movie drop or do you think it's an announcement? What, what do you think? I don't know. Um, if it's an announcement, I hope it's the release date for the Snyder cut or the Batman, a Batman project with Ben Affleck. Well, mm -hmm. that would be a project, I guess, not an announcement. Um, the way she was talking about it made it seem like it's a project. So I don't think it's just an announcement for like a release date of something or news. You know what I mean? Like an update on something. If it's a project, like a movie or a series, then I hope it's something to do with, you know, Batfleck, Deathstroke, whatever. Because, I mean, I find it kind of interesting that Joe Manganiello went from not really even, not even acknowledge, he wouldn't confirm that he was on set for the additional photography, even though we were kind of like, okay, your look right now is, you know, you have this white mohawk and this goatee, I'm pretty sure. We all kind of knew, right? That he was on set for additional photography. And even when he shared the picture, he still wouldn't confirm that it was from additional photography. <laughs> you know, he just said it was Zack Snyder who shot the picture. But we're still like, well, you didn't look like that in the movie. So we know it's additional photography, but he wouldn't confirm it. And then now in these recent interviews where he's doing the press for Arch Enemy, he's been now he's just like dropping a bunch of details <laughs> about, yes, that he was, you know, did additional photography with Zach and that he released all those details about the original script for Batman and Deathstroke. So suddenly he went from not really saying anything to like now he's dropping all these details and i find that kind of interesting that like i mean his his interview where he dropped all that stuff about batman and deathstroke and all the projects that deathstroke never happened and all that i think that was probably the most we've ever heard about the original batfleck script as far as like details and so that was yeah that was pretty significant and i well, I I I I I, 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 shared. I I I I I I this is this is just me guessing uh that maybe the project that Grace is talking about and they mentioned December 25 so I'm trying to connect cuz I know there's a post credit with Wonder Woman. Yes. So I'm I'm trying to connect could it be that the project that she's talking about that's going to jump out to December 25th is an announcement that is going to be done on the post credit a Wonder Woman eighty four, or like somehow tease the the new project. Yes, could be. Or oh, I'm I'm just I'm just trying to I'm just trying to um um you know think, mm -hmm. you know uh what could it be? But I, I I again guys when there's smoke there's fire. So uh the 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 the, the Ben Affleck death joke is it's 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 uh is gaining a lot of steam um which is not yeah. which is not not a surprise to me. Frank, I'm gonna answer your question uh, once I get Ali off because. Again, she's a mom, and, uh, and I appreciate she. She gave me two hours and fifteen minutes. So, Ali, um, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna uh, let you go. Um, it was a pleasure having you on my show. Really, really was. Uh, you, you asked Fabian some great, great, great questions. Uh, to your husband and to your kids, that I say thank you for lending mommy to me for about two hours and fifteen <laughs> minutes. Um, so I really, really appreciate it, and uh, I look forward uh, having more of these shows uh, together with you. Um and uh anytime you need me on your show, you, you should you should start doing one. Um, you know. I, yeah, I do want to start doing live streams and stuff like that. Um I'm still just I just want to feel comfortable with navigating it. You know, the software and like I just want to feel I want to feel confident that I'm going to be like I know what I'm doing while I'm doing it. You know what I mean? Right. So um, I kind of just need to do like 
some by myself kind of first before I start mm. bringing in, you know, just to feel comfortable Okay. with the, like, I feel comfortable talking and everything, but right. navigating the whole system, it's very different from just recording and then, you know, uploading and stuff. So I want to feel comfortable and confident with that first, but I am trying to get there. So, okay. Uh, but thank I, you so much for thinking of me to do this awesome interview with Fabian. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't want him to feel bad about the time thing because it's like, no, we'll do it. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know? Ali, it, you could have a schedule with Henry Cabo at 9 p.m. And if he tells you, hey, you have to do it uh, uh, 1, 1 p.m. Three in the morning. Henry, whatever whatever you want, uh, you, I, I, obviously, you know, we're, we're, we're grateful. You know, um, yeah, exactly. we're, definitely, we're definitely grateful. And it's a learning point. Is is a learning experience for me and obvious you're going to take that when you do your own show or <laughs> you can i need to find out because this happened to Lord. so let so so let so let me find out but hey anytime you need anything uh i'm here so uh please please reach out to me so uh i'm gonna i'm gonna um uh, uh, let you go and, and uh thank you thank you for for coming on my show i really appreciate it okay all right thanks so much for having me we'll not a problem you. okay uh, guys, I, I had I had to let uh, uh, Ali go because you know she again she she's a mom you know and her and she has uh, two infants that she has to uh, uh, take care of. But uh, to to wrap it up um, from from me because I I need to go because um, uh, I'm getting hungry. Uh, Lewis, I know you believe that there's going to be a Justice League two and th uh, two and three. I do. We'll see. And I'm not saying that you are right or wrong on that. But if there's not, will the Zack Snyder lovers be satisfied? Um, I only could speak with uh for me, uh, Tony. Um, so I'm I'm only gonna speak for me. Um, I, listen, I we got we got the Snyder Cup. Uh, and now there were Justice League one, two, and three were in the plans before uh, BVS was released. That was the original intent. So, but am I gonna complain? No, but there's nothing wrong wanting more. What's wrong wanting more, but doing it in a respectful way? You're basic. You're basically the way I take it, Tony, is that you're you're saying uh, that if I don't get it, I should move on, and that's it. And your con you remember, people, you know, not you personally, but people also told us to move on from the Snyder Cut. People also, you know, uh, it's over. We're not gonna get it. And if we would have listened to the critics, we we would not got what we got. So, um, you know, I, I think if you if you did a poll, I think most fans and this is the correct questions that, that you should ask me. Um, we what most fans wanted is the Snyder is Snack Snyder to finish his his arc. That's what we wanted. If 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 you if you and I know you out there, uh, the general ninety percent of the people. That wanted the Snyder cut. The, we what we wanted the Snyder cuts because we want to see Zack Snyder's five story arc. That's what we want. Um, so it's just it's your your question is it's 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 a little bit more complicated uh, than that uh, because again most of us want the five story arc, and the five story arc was Man of Steel, Batman versus Superman, then J A one two and three. That's the far story arc. That's what we wanted. So uh, now, if you ask me, Lewis, uh, if we get the far story arc, would the Zack Snyder lovers be satisfied? I think if you did a poll, I think most of most of us would say yes. We'll be satisfied. I I think I think that's 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 the general consensus out there. That if we get the far story arc, yes. Yeah, I agree. There's nothing. You're right, Tony. There's nothing wrong wanting more of what something I like. Correct. Um, and I think I think the way Warner Brothers is doing it right now, um, them having a multiverse caters to every fan. It caters to you uh, that likes. Uh, it's from what I understand, you're more in line with Matt Reeves and um, line of thinking Batman, and it's okay. Um, and I think this is why it was that they think that I think this is why it was the right move by Warner Brothers establishing a multiverse, you know, Batman Beyond with Michael Keaton, you know, the Batman, uh, Ben Affleck, Batman versus Deathstroke, 
then you have the Matt Reeves Batman. Um, and now, if you notice, when th that was established, the media and, and and the Disney and the Marvel people were criticizing it. You know, they said it was going to get confused. But when they saw potential, now they're doing it. Now you don't hear them. You know, t t this is why I find them so. You know, I call them hypocrites. Because you you had you had a problem with DC, but not you don't now the Marvel's doing the same thing. You're okay having three Spider Mans. You you were not okay in having three Batmans, but you're okay having three Spider Mans. It just it just drives me crazy. It it, it really does. It, it drives me crazy. So, um, guys, you have no idea this this was a big day for me. Um, uh, I couldn't sleep last night. Um, I was thinking about my interview, with, you know, with Fabian. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the interview. I, I tried to ask the question that I thought uh, that he would answer, um, you know. But towards the end, I did ask him about a project. Uh, does he know a project he's working on next? Uh, and is it Zack Snyder? He couldn't say. It's because obviously, you know, I got I got told something. Um, I I got told something, so um, I just thought maybe. Um, you know, maybe uh, I get a little bit about him, but I'm not I'm not going to say, you know, what I got told per se. But I mean, you guys could put one on one together, uh, but I, I won't do it out of respect, out of, you know, uh, you know, Fabian. Now, once I see out there, once I see that it's a uh, 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 rumor out there, then I might I may say, you know, what I heard. But, uh, you know, I just. Uh, but I, I, I really, really, uh, was working, you know, with Fabian for, for a while. Um, and respectfully, I was, I was knocking on a door, but not, I was not harassing him, but it was more respectful. Like maybe like once every six weeks, I was shooting him an email and say, hey, how you doing? So forth. And he was very, very, uh, very respective so um i'm doing the same thing with uh karen bryson i i you know uh hopefully uh she says she would strongly consider uh she would no excuse me she would think about coming on my show once uh the snyder cut uh is released she says she'd think about it which is which is good uh which which is good so uh i i want her on my show uh and hopefully she could bring ray fisher on the show so we could discuss the mother and, and son relationship and, and, you know, and looking at from their eyes, you know, that's just so many, so many questions, you know, that, that I want to ask Ray and, and Karen Bryson. Um, I'm working on also, you know, hopefully one day I get Larry Fong on, on my show as well. Um, uh, another, another great gentleman, um, he's a very classy guy, very, 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 very classy guy. Um, I, I, I'll, if he asked me to, you know, um, do something for him, as far as a project or uh, you know that, that he's working on you know i i i'll i'll run i'll run through a, a brick wall for for larry fong and i i know why i say that so um but i'm gonna wrap this up guys uh it's been two hours and, and 25 minutes so it was it's it, it, it to me it was it was great so uh i thank you guys uh those that uh that joined my show um and um I look, I look forward towards having another show on December 26th. I'm going to give you guys more details, but it's going to be mostly uh, woman centric. Uh, you know, I want to dedicate, you know, that day to all the ladies out there, you know, that I know personally, I'm going to try to convince a wifey and my two kids just to stop by, say hello. Um, you know, cause they, 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 they do, they do a, a, a great job. Um, and <laughs> not a problem. Thank you, Frank. Um, just kidding, Tony. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, man, I, I I'm I'm so grateful, Fabian. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for jump, joining my show. You didn't have to do it, and um, I really, really appreciate you uh, coming on my show. I I, I really do. Um, all the thanks to you, and uh, hopefully we get to do it again. Hopefully, hopefully I get to have you and Larry Fong on the same time. That would be awesome having Fabian and Larry Fong on 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 the same time and and uh, I, I how's this guys? How about having Fabian and Larry Fong on the anniversary of BVS? That'd be awesome, wouldn't, wouldn't it? Definitely be awesome. 
but in any event, uh, guys, uh, look out for my tweet. Um, you know, uh, f- for those that haven't yet, please, please uh, hit the subscribe subscribe button um, and hit that notification um, button on. Um, and um, my next show is going to be December twenty sixth. Um, I I sent a couple of invitation to uh, prominent females um, um, within the movement, and uh, hopefully I get to have um, Taylor. Uh, she's a Fox News reporter, uh, and I know BT Jen. She's uh, another another Wonder Woman fan. I think she's a host of a radio station that I'm I'm trying to also bring on as well. Um, and, uh, if there's any, uh, ladies out there, um, that want to join the show, please hit me on my Twitter, on my DM. Um, and you're more than welcome to, you know, join in a few, in a few minutes of the show and, 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 and discuss, you know, what the movie, uh, uh you know, what you thought about the movie and, and, and so forth. So, uh, in any event, guys, thank you so much. Thank you for joining the, the, the Lewis Antenna show. Um, I am, a, I'm your host, uh, Lewis. So until the next time. I'll see you.